How's that? There's four S ranks, I think, right? Or six? I already forgot. I just looked at the list. Um, I mean, he dropped shit too, right? That's you can always say like, "Oh man, you'd be such a good player if you didn't drop anything," but that's true for every single player. Yeah, exactly. I'm Gretch. I always hear that whenever it's someone who's salty. It's like, "Oh, if you didn't, if I didn't drop, I would have won," or shit like that. It's like, "Well, if you wouldn't drop, you'd be a better player." So yes, if I was a better player, I would have won. That's all I hear. In which case, I have nothing to say except yes. Exactly. I mean, there's more to it, obviously. You can also be a better player by having more intricate knowledge of what works. So there's a lot of stuff that you wouldn't even attempt unless you knew it worked. So you'd be a better player if you knew those things. Example, every single year and set up. Ooh. Usually in this matchup, you see the Hugo pick SI3. Oh, what are they doing? Neem is one of the best, and he's only A rank. Last time I played Neem, I went um, 1 in 10, I think. So worse, worse than I just did against Tenren. But usually when I go fight Tenren, I get smacked. Last time I fought Tenren, which I am a little bit more in practice than I was a while ago. Like, I've actually tried to level up a little bit in the last, like, couple months. One month. Um, last time I played Tenren, I think this time he just, like, took a little while longer to adapt to my new strategy, because I do have a new strategy, but it's not, like, invincible or anything. Um, but last time I played Tenren, I lost, like, 35-2 to two or something like that. It's nice having a rank. SF3 didn't have a rank forever. Not until Fight K2 right now. I was in... Uh, there was a... OE had a top players. And I was on... I think at the high... I peaked at number 9 on the Aura list. But I had a way better win rate than all the other Auras. Except for like the number 2 guy I think had a really high win-loss rate as well. Because you got... Fifth, you got like points just purely for playing the game. So even if you won or lost, you still got points. Or like it not... You got points if you won only, but they weren't taken away if you lost. So, like, a lot of the top players on Online Edition just had, like, you know, thousands of games won and lost. So the ranks were a little bit dishonest. But, like, um, I had something like, I forget, I had, like, something like 800 games won and then, like, 40 games lost. And then, like, the player above me, for example, had, like, like 900 games won and like 900 games lost or something like that. Wow, whiff punish. You have to be careful with punishing with Chun-Li super. Not super careful, but um, if the opponent's hitbox is still active, you can run into it with Chun-Li because it's not invincible. Oh, he actually hit a jump. Oh, was that going to chip out? I wasn't looking at the health. I thought they were saying Anatani, but it was Aratani. It's not healing Elena. That could have been RTC that was jump strong. Not doing RTC, I don't know if that was better. If he was looking for two parries. Usually getting usually there's no outside, I think. But maybe if someone's waiting for a second parry. There's a nice little RTC. Tournaments. What tournaments? I found out about Frosty Fostings the day before it happened. I would have entered that. Yeah, that's that's the issue with Third Strike, is that there's no events. I'm quite a good player. I would probably call myself top 1% in the United States. Just because there's so many baddies. But there's like, you know, there's got to be at least 100 players better than me in the US alone. And considering online play could get like, you know, at least at least 20 of those guys. 
Like when I looked at the winners of Frosty Fostings, um, it looked it looked like I could have made top eight, but making top one would have been just pure chance. Nice confirm. All I did when I played Hugo, I used a Hugo made before Aura, and all I did was jump in down fierce into down jab, down jab, and then confirm super. I dropped it all the time, but I also hit it a decent amount. That was just my strat. I would throw someone, then I would jump over them with the body splash, and I would just hope that they got hit. And if they didn't get hit, I would just down jab, down jab anyway. But if they did get hit, I would confirm super. It was a very basic strat, but I was new to fighting games back then. And it taught me confirming. Hugo's a pretty frustrating character to play, though. He's not very good. He rewards you for, like, having anti-opponent strategies because his damage is high. So you just have to turn him into a parry monster to make him work at a high level, which is definitely attainable. But, you know, I wasn't a high level. Apart from winning a bunch of Wednesday Night Fights events, the only thing I've ever done for Street Fighter 3 was the LA 25th tournament. In which case, I came in ninth. The Wednesday Night Fights were a lot easier because the competition was worse. Ish. Yeah, it was worse. Some of the same players were there. Well, a lot of the same players were there, but like not as many of the good players. Like Chirithi was at LA 25th. But he's not local to me, he's fucking Canadian. That was close roundhouse. Ooh, good parry and punish. That's that good shit. Yesterday I had super bad, like, fucking, I don't know, post-nasal drip or something. Phlegm. And I was just, like, coughing. And I was like, wow, Christ. I hope this isn't COVID. But today I haven't coughed at all. Samurai. Nice name. Dude's a fucking samurai. Samurai is for hiragana, but it's only one kanji. You don't see that very often. It's kind of rare. Almost all the time, uh, kanji are uh, uh, either two or three katakana. I mean, not katakana, uh, either two or three hiragana. Every character in Dead Strike feels weird to me except Dora. Shadows feel weird. Elena feels weird. Everyone else feels weird. Or it feels natural. Matainai. <laughs> 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 I've heard that expression before, but I can't remember what it is. Oh, This could be really good. Nice, he got that. That's hard to get. Ooh, GG. You, I found out you only need the last parry to get a jumping combo on Chun-Li. I mean, Daigo did the full parry because he was going to die. But you can actually parry the last hit and then jump. You don't need to jump and then parry the last hit. It's easier to parry the last hit midair. Because it's kind of tight to hit the um, punish on the ground, but I was really surprised to learn that you don't need the you don't need the you can just jump after the parry, and still get it. That was a nice little optimization by this replayer. It's not like crazy hard, but it's still nice. A lot of people don't do that. Or I can't get a jump into the best of my knowledge, except for that fucking really stupid double jump setup. Very hard to do. I would never go for it in a real match. Where is everyone? Are they all asleep? No one's talking. It must be fucking nighttime, 2 a.m. Thought these were hashtag real bath hours. Yeah, that's it. That's everyone here right now. 
I um, have to wake up on Thursdays at 9 o'clock for a class, and I gotta say, um, I'm not exactly on the sleep schedule where that's good. That's two days from now. It's the day after tomorrow. Technically the day after today. I have to piss so badly and I was going to do it after my games and I never even did it. No one go anywhere. Just enjoy this Chun-Li versus Alina while I pee. I have class. I don't have work for two months, but I still have class. I wasn't supposed to have class for ages, but I managed to sneak my way into two classes that were both waitlist only. I wasn't even waitlisted. I just like emailed the professors and I was like, let me in. That stomp looked so wacky. It was funny how far Chun Li flew, though. Oh, that fucking Sand Strong wasn't meaty enough. Makoto is at a huge advantage here, I was going to say, because anything is going to combo to Super 1. It looked pretty even, but honestly, Chun Li needed like several pokes plus a confirm. Huge advantage is a bit dishonest. Chun Li with meter is super good. But Makoto was one hit from winning, and that one hit could have also been a command grab. So overall, I thought it was pretty good for Makoto. I think this matchup is seen as slightly good for Chun Li, which is probably surprising to no one. But it's not that good for Chun Li. Ooh. Very nice little confirm. Very late super jump. I never noticed that Chun Li players do that until I tried playing Chun Li a little bit and I realized like I couldn't I could only get one hit of jump fierce all the time. And I was like, What what the hell's happening? Why can I not get them? I thought this was free. And then um I started watching, paying more attention during Chun Li matches, and it turns out that Chun Li's do delayed super jump all the time. You can basically super jump at any point during the last hit before it recovers. There's a few moves like that in this game. Oris is actually like that, his close strong. Super jumps for the whole cancel. I mean, for the whole move. Not all of it, but most of it. Ooh, nice. Super good. Ugh, that was a bad confirm. That's super awful for him. Oh, that could have been super. That was deep enough, I think, right? Maybe. That, like, put him so far back. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is this is a wash. That style of super, the big, big damage one bar kind of super, you can't... You have to make your meter count. You can't waste it. You can't have those wild ones. <clears throat> uh, 
That was a super nice cross through into a hard kick. Dudley actually blocked it. And then Chun-Li was caught completely off guard. Neutral super jumped. You know what a super satisfying feeling is? Is you do the OS parry after every dash punch versus Makoto, even if it hits. And um, I should say, especially only if it hits. Otherwise, you just mix up what you do. But if it hits, you OS parry, and then the Makoto drops the link, and then you parry the Seichusen. And it's like a ha. Seichusen has a really fucking good feel to parry. I think I once parried one of our last Seichusens. He much prefers to run SA2 from what I can tell. But SA1 I think is a little better versus Zoro. You can make either one work. But I would say... I would say I'm more afraid of SA2, but SA1 I think is better. I just hate eating like a raw SA2 done like YOLO. It's just a bad feel to eat. But in terms of like which one is going to kill me, SA1 is... Technically speaking, the one that's, you know... It's harder to play around. There's a lot of matchups in this game where the super doesn't matter that much. Or, like, they're both pretty good. Like, uh, Dudley Super 1 or Super 3 versus Chun-Li. Ah, oh, that was good. Now what? Ugh, that was so good. Red parry on, like, the last hit. Into fucking, what, staying strong, ducking super? Holy shit. That in series of inputs was crazy. We're seeing some nice stuff. Ah. Hazanshu is a counter for Hazanshu. Tommy on the left is, I think, the penultimate player. I think that's what that means. I don't know the kanji at all, but I think they put that before on the second to last guy. Chun Li, Chun Li is so fucking dumb. Dead to a throw. Oh, very nice. They're both dead to a throw. Building meter. It's the game we play. It's fucking Street Fighter 3 right here. Uh, low strong is really good in this matchup, I think, but it's not very rewarding. Low forward leads to a there it is. Low forward leads to a super, and low strong leads to nothing. But low strong has a very high. It's good. You can use it to counter kind of poke low forward because it goes really far and uh, has that reach and that timing to counter kind of poke low forward. I was gonna say if I was one of these Chun Li's, I'd be looking for low strong just outside low forward range, and that's what ended up winning. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest, and this is going to be heresy to everyone here, but I'm not crazy about the Third Strike soundtrack. It's just okay. When I hear, like, fucking um, CBS2 soundtrack, it's ten times as good. Or, like, Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5. Street Fighter 2, even. Way better than Street Fighter 3. Street Fighter 3 is way too atmospheric. The songs are all pretty good. Oh, this is going to kill. The yawn. They're both taunting each other post-match. Yeah, I guess. It's not memorable, though. SF5 songs and SF2 songs are atmospheric and memorable. It feels like an obligatory soundtrack, you know what I mean? There's only two tracks in the game where I kind of like them. SF2 has like five songs that I would just listen to as songs. Zengi's theme, Fei Long's theme, Guile's theme. They're fucking good. Honestly, DJ's theme. Ken and Ryu. Ken's is fucking hype, right? Is it that one? Right? I think that's Ken's theme. That's a good fucking song. It's like that. 
でも誰かが教えてあげないといけないじゃないですかそうだねだから一旗見に来てくれたんですよ確かにサミさんが証明してくれたねじゃサミさん I wonder if the Abu is short for Abuki やっぱりそういうことしてたら負けるんだっていうね I wonder how Tenren would stack up against these guys I was so happy to find out that Tenren went to Japan and fucked everyone up at like the most recent、um, co-op cup. That filled me with joy to know that Tenren is good over there too. I think so, right? Go find some co op cup footage. I think it was co op cup. There was like a team of、uh, USA players at some Japanese arcade tournament recently. I think Five Star was there. And, um. Was it Five Star? I don't remember. It's been so long. I haven't thought about it in over a year. But Tenren went and he fucked a bunch of people up. And I was like, yes, thank God. That wasn't going to do enough anyway. Didn't matter. Nice. Nice jump. He got the far TC, though. I don't fucking know. Maybe. Someone once told me that 30th was a frame and a half slower than arcade. I was like, what the fuck is half a frame? I didn't say that, I just thought it.、Um, but I'm guessing that's just an average. Yeah. So, like, maybe fucking 30th is five frame and arcade is three and a half. Nice. Ooh, that can be on either side. Neko punch! That's it, right? Oh, now we got an exhibition. Ugh, that didn't look good. I don't know what Chun Li would do there besides poke. If she doesn't have super, there's nothing I think. Ugh. This matchup is okay. Chun Li has no actual escape for mirror stuff, and no counterplay to it, to the best of my knowledge. So,、um, normally she wins in neutral, as always. But once Yurian starts getting some mirror pressure, it works, as always. So, basically, like, this is. Both characters kind of have their regular ass kit. Chun Li invalidates a lot of characters, so like, the fact that Yurian can fight relatively fairly is quite good. I think this matchup's usually seen as a 6 4 in Chun Li's favor. It might be a little bit worse than that, but I'm not sure. A Yurian player would know. Yeah, it's gotta be SF2. I never. There's something I've never seen anyone else complain about with SF2, but it pisses me the hell off. It, like, put me off the game really hard. It's that there's a lot of lag whenever a fireball、uh, connects. And that lag also lasts until the person recovers from getting hit by the fireball and then starts an action. It, like, just is so weird that the game is, like, running at so and so speed and then just slows down periodically as both the players are playing. I noticed it immediately and I could not get over it. It's, like, different from hit stop. 
because it happens specifically with fireballs. I've seen it highlighted one time and it was on Sonic Hurricane. My just pointed out in like a fucking a replay he was watching. He's like, uh, this bison eats a fireball and then immediately does low run house. And you can see the low run house, like the early frames during the lag. And the Ryu who he's fighting just DPs the low run house. Because he reacted to the fucking slowdown. The startup during the slowdown. And I was just like, what is this meta? This is a thing that players play around. Frame variants. Um, there's also, yeah, that uh, the game literally runs on a frame skip in order to run at 60 FPS. So um, one frame links are sometimes, I think there's some links that are sometimes two frames, sometimes one frame, and there's other links that are sometimes one frame, sometimes impossible. And appropriately, most people never go for those occasionally impossible links, and there aren't that many useful ones in the game to the best that I can tell, so it's not a huge issue. But like I think Ken can do hard Tatsu into like hard DP or something like that. But it's like a it's a one frame link that's sometimes not there. The only thing harder than a one frame link, a one frame link that doesn't exist half the time. Nice. Slightly randomized damage, slightly randomized dizzy. Dizzy also takes a random amount of inputs to mesh out of. I think there's another, there's a couple more aspects of randomness. Uh, throw techs. There are no techs, there are only throw reductions. And whoever got the throw first gets the throw by the one frame. But if both players get a throw on the same frame, it's just a coin flip. Nice bad. That's a super rewarding link, the one I mentioned. I think that's it. Hard Tatsu, hard DP. Ken can like touch of death characters with that link, I think. Maybe he gets like a dizzy with it, something like that. There's optimal combos into it. There's a lot of other jank with uh, SF2, which I didn't like. The supers, I don't like the supers at all. The way the super meter isn't preserved. Nice. Good confirm. You rarely see people do the low forward fireball confirm. It's occasionally good, though. I really didn't like the lack of normal special super in SF2. I know it wasn't standard yet. But I always thought it was super weird. It was like the Marvel games and like fucking shit like that. It's like they they'd already progressed to like this point where like there was like a next level on the hierarchy. It felt like a like a step back to not have that. But Street Fighter games, they're kind of like you know sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. But I think uh, Special Hunter Super is cool. I don't know why. Autism. I would have parried that. If it was me. That would have been an easy parry. Crash Fierce Light Tatsu DP. SF2, yeah, a lot of de degenerate stuff. Ken's throw loops are even nastier than I thought they were when I found out more about them. Ken can do um, DP motion into forward and then hard kick car light punch. And if the opponent is throwable, you get the towards hard kick, which gives you a throw. Um, Ken's knee bash, I think. And if the opponent is not throwable, you get towards hard kick, which then gets carred into a light uppercut. And the light uppercut um, is admissible. So, um, you know, how did they get out of the throw? Did they jump? Did they fucking do something admissible? Well, you can't jump out of throws in Street Fighter 2. But whatever they did to get out of the throw, Ken's DP will beat it. Because Ken has more invincibility than most characters. That's like an old Ken strat specifically, because Ken, old Ken has a shitload of invincibility on light DP. And um, New Ken has less. Um, get the reversal throw. And then get the coin flip. You can just do wake up throw and then be lucky. Oh, later. A lot of characters don't have a good escape. Yeah, don't get, don't get cornered by Ken.
Oh, it's fucking hyperbomb and it just worked. What do you guys think? I would be livid. Oh yeah, it's SA3 Chun as well. Wow. EX Kiko can rare footage. <laughs> that is a really garbage fireball. They're having some fun right now. That's cool. Cool supers. SA3 is a real candidate for the worst super in the game. It's horrible. It has an animation, but it's like impossible to get it to play out. Almost always, it's like a very slow, easy to parry fucking Hazanshu. It like theoretically in tears, but actually it doesn't. Oh, that was a failed one. I don't even know if that combos though. That could have been a hyper bomb, I think. Oh. Yeah, you do um not necessarily option select in uh with a DP. You option select that you do like you can't jump out of throws in SF uh SF two. So jab into command grab, you can't escape by holding up. Which means you have to either reversal out or um get a reversal throw. And then win a coin flip. Look at that. Amazing. He could have just paid that. I don't know how many parries it is though. It's slow as shit though. It's a uh, jump jab. You do a safe jump with jump jab. So if they DP, then you block and then you command grab them. And then if they don't DP, you do like a crouch jab or it's a stand jab. It's one of them. And then from there, you do negative edge um, command grab. So basically, you like, you know, cir full circle into release light punch. And if the opponent is throwable, then you get a throw. Um, and if the opponent is not throwable, you just block because um, there's no whiff animation for the command grab. So if you do it with a negative edge, it either throws them if they're throwable or it does nothing. And you can still block if they're not throwable. It's a pretend 12. No one put in a coin. So base And then if he lands a command grab... Um, no, I'm not going to play Guilty Gear Strive, sorry. If he lands a command grab, he can do another safe jump jab. So safe jump jab, if they DP, they get grabbed. If they don't DP, they block a crouch jab. And then from there, he um, does an OS 360. And if they block, they get grabbed. And if they don't block, they get... If they DP, then uh, uh, Tiok blocks it and then, then DPs them. And uh, anytime they get grabbed, um, it loops. That also, I think that also works with a uh, new T Hawk, right? Like, I think he still doesn't have the, the throw with animation. But uh, old T Hawk is just used because he has better hitboxes on certain normals. Like the uh, body splash, I think, the down fierce. Baron, yeah, I'm playing Makoto. He normally plays Remy. We don't know the final character isn't 12. It could be. It's unlikely. I'm really sad because I would have loved a 12 style character. That slow ass chop is a huge. Wow! That slow ass chop is a huge liability in, uh, if you're not running, if you don't have a meter for a super. <laughs> what is Baronion doing? <laughs> this looks super awkward. It looks like neither player knows what they're doing. That's a punish. He whiffed a throw there. I like throw whiff is really subtle. It's almost his neutral stance. He just lifts his hand a little bit. Uh, I can't believe Hyperbomb's working as much as it is. 
It'd be really cool if you could actually land like a heavy chop. A really nice fix to Alex in Street Fighter 3 would be cancelable towards Fierce and having that be able to combo into um, medium chop. That would be really fun. Because that's like a bunch of things you rarely use. If you just took some of his SF5 stuff and crammed it into SF3, it would be like a huge improvement for him. If you had like a reason to do parry into overhead or towards fierce. Alex would love a cancelable heavy and that's like the best one to do, I think. It's funny that that change in SF5 would be super welcome in SF3. But imagine parry into like towards fierce into medium chop. Into like fucking um stay medium kick X chop. That would be so much damage. And if you had a combo into medium chop, it would make uh SA1 and SA3 ten times better. That like one change would save Alex. A <laughs> good low. Um probably the heavy actually. I would really love that. The more I think about it, I would love that for Alex. Because it wouldn't really change his neutral too much. It would just give him a really strong parry follow-up. And I feel like that's the kind of character Alex is. I don't want to change his neutral all that much. Is that a punish? Probably was. I didn't know, but medium and heavy um, slash elbow are actually pretty minus in this game. That dizzy bar is looking kind of stressful. That was far fierce, but he did it too late. Far fierce is not a super reliable anti-air for Ryu, honestly. It's okay. Ooh, do you want close fierce? What is this Ryu? This is Kiraki, isn't he? Um, an Atlanta player. Is this just? Oh, this is uh, Ohira. Isn't he a uh, Hugo? Is this just a tournament where everyone's playing meme characters? Everyone's played their fucking B-list character. Honestly, it'd be okay if Alex had a cancelable, a super cancelable uh, light chop too. It wouldn't like ruin him or anything. It would only work in Tessay too. It's okay for him to have that. It's dumb for Alex that the only like special move, the only meterless special move that he can combo into, doesn't have a super cancel. There's only a few characters like that in the game. Hugo might be the only other one. Everyone else has like normal special super without having to use EX. That's the worst part. If EX chops second hit was a super hit, that'd be even better. Well, it'd be worse because it wouldn't combo into SA2 because it knocks down. But um, it'd be cool if you got the EX both hits, if you got all the damage of the EX. If I rebalanced Alex, I would make it so all the damage of the EX drop was in the first hit. That would also make it more reliable to go for red parries on it, which would be kind of fun. Or less risky, I should say. Huh? Huh? Why are you looking for low forward super if you're running super 2? That shit doesn't work. This is just a tournament full of the fucking main players just fucking around. This is Tominaga, I didn't realize. It's Ken players Tominaga. Alex only needs like two changes to be a viable character. Or like three. He would shoot up the tier list with just the things we talked about. Shinryuken is actually super damaging. If you're like, it's, I'm not going to say it's like viable in any matchup, but technically speaking, it does more damage than anything else can do after a parry. And that's got to be worth something, right? I'm not going to say it's fucking worth picking over SA3, but it is novel. That like Ken can get parry into like strong, fierce uh, SA2 and just get a massive amount of damage. You. 
I mean, like, I feel like Perry makes it so you can kind of win against anyone as long as you're, like, good at anti that character. When you look at every other... I mean, technically speaking, obviously Alex is viable because um, there's a player who wins with him. But he's had, like, no, like, serious tournament success almost at all. Genki being, like, at least partially carried by the team and making it to co-op cup finals is, like, the only time Alex has ever done anything. Almost always he just gets smacked. This combos. A lot of damage on that. Ah, uh, just like that. Was that a hard DP beating close strong? Interesting. Sean. Takahashi Sean. SA1. I don't know. Alex actually has quite a few players compared to um, his tier. Usually there's an approximate um, correlation of a character's tier and how many players they have. But there's a few exceptions in SF3. Uh, Yan and Yang are quite rare, despite being very good. Chun-Li is unbelievably rare, despite being both good and easy. Uh, because people just don't like playing her, I guess. That could have been super cancelled. Um... Q and Hugo and Alex all see a lot of play, despite being low tier. Apart from that, the characters are all about as popular as you would expect. Ibuki and Elena are both somewhat unplayed. Like, you see more Necros and, um, Necros and Remy's and Ibuki's and Elena's. So they're a bit less popular than you would expect for their tier. Ken is common as shit. Ryu is common as shit. Akuma is common as shit. Yurian's quite common. That wheel kick. You can get Tatsu here. Oh, you didn't get it. My Tatsu works there. Stupid ass jumping. There's Genki, there's um, Keisuke, there's uh, Kazuya. There's a few Alex players. Uh, Akaga Hoshi or whatever. Akaga Akagaharu? Is that it? I don't remember his name. Akagayaru. That was it. Couldn't think of it. <laughs> Alex in most play uses three of his six special moves. Whatever you could have super reversed. Right? Is that right? No, four, I guess. I guess it might be Red Frog, right? I don't know if Kairu is Frog or like what. Or if it's like Croak or something like that. It's obviously got some kind of Frog meaning. Karo is Croak, isn't it? He could have punished that. If you parry that, you can punish it even full screen, I think. He could have done like Dash and Sweep or something. Oh my god. I would have taken it through there. I was done. If I was that shot, I died. Nice. Good parry. Battle of the Reuse. This looks like a nice fun event. They're all playing casually. It's fun to see people's off characters. Doesn't our live play Hugo? I think I've seen him play Hugo on stream before. Makes sense. If you want to spin people up, it's only Makoto and Hugo pretty much. And also I guess Alex and Q. If you want the grappler experience, I would say Makoto and Hugo are closest. Ah, he wanted low strong as a punish, and it was too far. He treated it like a confirm, but it wasn't technically. Stay around us here. Jump around us here. Oh, he jumped. Jumped up. I knew all the cool corpse hops. I mean, corpse struggles. Antier jumped towards strong. I hate when people do that to me because it works. It's good. It's not bad. Ah, oh, through too soon. He expected Ryu to parry all of them. But Ryu actually got hit by the last one. Oh, this is looking pretty good, because this is going to be another dungeon soon. Never mind. Oh, Tatsu there would have been nice. I don't know, because it could have been... If you low parry, usually you get a crutching opponent. So Tatsu was not good there. 
Yeah. Nothing good to do there. Except parry five times and pray that you don't die. Same matchup, Tominaga. Tominaga's like, let me show you how to do this. That looked like a car throw, based on the way the characters moved. Nice. You'd love to see it. That should have been Hartatsu based on screen position, I feel. That should have Hartatsu even. Hartatsu and Hard DP do the same damage. Hartatsu just has better corner carry and Oki. That was a super awkward jump jab. That was a really cool jump short. I actually like that. Because I think he landed far enough away that he was outside of throw range. Don't quote me. Based on he wasn't point blank and he neutral jump like kicked. Ah, beautiful. Ugh, the jump was good. Show me a big SA1 combo. Do another one. Yes! Oh, it was too early. It was too early. SA1 has super cool combos you never see. You can do two SA1s into Hartatsu. Let's punish. I'm jealous of Ryu. Ryu's fucking crouch fierce is like as fast as my launcher. Wish I had a cancelable heavy and I wish it was that fast. Or I was like staying strong is like the best normal in the whole game though, so I can't complain. It really is, I think. I can't think of a better one. That was a punish, I think. Hit his landing recovery. Necro is fun. This is SA1 Necro. You don't see that as much these days as you used to. It's still good. Ooh, thrown out of a low roundhouse. <laughs> yeah. Excellent synergy with the supers. Aura has alarming fairness uh, among top tiers. Like, as in, like, if there are no low tiers involved. Like, Aura versus, like, Akuma. Or, like, Aura versus Ryu or Ken. Aura versus uh, Yurian. Even twins. It like seems like he should break the game a lot in every matchup. But actually, like at the end of the day, Ryu versus Zoro is not too bad. Pretty even. Ryu versus Ken is pretty even. I mean, Aura versus Ken is pretty even. Aura versus Makoto is pretty even. Aura versus Dudley, pretty even. It's like hard to believe that Aura's kit could be fair in any matchup. But then there are certain matchups where he just donks you. But isn't it true? Doesn't it feel like Oro should just, like, like with an infinite, he should just ruin the game? But you can play around Stand Strong, and it's, like, not even bad. It's fun, if anything. Out of the meaty super. Fuck it. Take a throw into fucking EX Tackle. I'd have eaten that. I like jumping after taking a throw. He actually should have not attacked midair. He should have just landed. For the non shunners. No way. Didn't you just see, uh, what's his face? Um, Tenren? He wanted to run it back over and over and over. He clearly enjoyed fighting Oro. That's different. You don't normally see that mirror there. It's good though. You would normally see like another tackle and then like a, like a, some kind of mirror after that. Juggle into mirror. It's not that he has much in footsies. Yeah, I guess it's just returns. You have like okay neutral 
outside of that, but the neutral doesn't lead to anything except for the close strong. It's like you have one thing that leads to all your combos, and if you can't land it, you have no combos. Just like Tatsu. Did you know if Yurian parries the first hit of Aura's launcher, then does Crouch Fierce? Um, Aura's the second hit of Aura's launcher never hits, and he can't super jump cancel it? Or he can't super jump cancel the second hit, rather. Yurian. I also lose my super cancels. And yeah, it is the best unblockable escape in the game. Now I think about it, because it doesn't matter. Direction doesn't matter. Nice. That was a great crutch fierce. Cancel would have made it even better. Konitan is a necro player. Sean alert. SA2 Sean. I strongly feel that Mirror is like um, Aura's SA2 and SA3 rolled into one super. Ooh, that was a punish, but not a super strong one. Necro can be good. He's played well. Um, you get the mid-screen unblockables. Oh, I'm surprised I got any hits. You get the mid-screen unblockables with S with mirror, if the right setup, and then you also get the um, corner like pressure. This is Takahashi. This is not TM. Takahashi is a Japanese last name. He had a juggle there, I think. I think you have a lot of juggle potential there. Show you can in. Out of super for the kill, just for bully. All I hear is whining. I play Cruz and he plays me. Um, he beats me more, more often than I beat him. Yurian does better versus the top tier Sonora does. Ken, Yun, and Chun Li. I think so. I think it might be a smidge in Aura's favor. It's like 5.5, 4.5, I think. Maybe even. It might be 5.5. Five. They both have a super high ceiling, so it's hard to say. But I played that match up to death, and it feels very fair to me. But if anyone has an edge, it's Aura, I think. I've got a lot of hot takes on Aura's tears. I think Remy is not that great. Or like it's like kinda great. It's not like as crazy as like people make it out to me. My final number is six point five, three point five. Same with Alex. Those are frequently stated Oh Oh damn it. Those are frequently stated to be um seven three matchups, but I don't think they're quite there. Q might be worse than people say. I think Q might be a real 8 too. 
Or OQ might be uh, Q's worst matchup. Those leg kicks. I think it might really be. Remember, Kuroda says um, Q Makoto is actually 6 4 in Makoto's favor. And he kind of made that look true. I remember watching a replay of um, what's his face? Danatos beating uh, Kuroda's Q. It was only like a, you know, a short set. But I remember it. It was like the first time I'd ever seen Kuroda lose. I don't remember what Kuroda put that matchup as on his little tier list. It might have been a 7 3. It was like the silliest tier list. It was probably true. It's the funny thing. It's probably all true. Dude plays every character better than most people can. He plays fucking... He, his side characters are better than other people playing those characters as their mains. Mm. He didn't even have to dash to get out of the corner. Or get Remy into the corner. Kenora is 7-3. That one... I don't know. I think it's going the other way. Traditionally it's 6-4 in Ken's favor. But I think it might be 5.5. 4.5. I think there's potential for Aura there. But it's all very theoretical. Five point five in Ken's favor. See, I kinda like that. I kinda like that. Six four. I like Deshikin's number. I feel like that might be mine as an Aura player. I played that match up to death, but I'm not as good as these guys. It's hard to say, like, you know, Ken's strat is more immune to... It's more pure. More immune to counter play. Ken came when in putsies. I have no thoughts on B-Shift. Ask me again on the 22nd. It looks very. It looks like it's going to change the game a lot, and I think that's very welcome. I think people who like gave up on SF5 have a real reason to play it again. It's like something that's serious going to ch uh, change things up. It's going to change the way the whole game works. It's not like Red Focus and SF and Ultra. Yeah, there's a, that's true for like most Oro matchups at the high level. Is Oro has to play like very aggressive with the parries. Um, I never stop playing SF5, but I usually just don't stream it. I usually do casuals with my IRL friend, or like occasionally stuff with the fucking soccer Discord. I would call Oro extremely inconsistent at high-level play, but with very high potential. It's hard to say, though, because even Kuroda, like, you know, his Oro, he just chooses his battle super carefully, but he's got kind of like a defensive. A defensive is the wrong word, because he does kind of move in and fish for parries a bit, but he's non-committal is what I really want to say. He's got a very non-committal Oro. Kuroda has a very non-committal playstyle in general, though. Nice. A very long cancel window on back strong. Konitan is so good. He's very fun to watch. Oh, look at that low strong. Even if that was parried, Ken had no punish. That was super early in the jump. Dio. 
Dio. Dio. That's the Syrian's name if it wasn't clear. Was Dio the first ever music reference in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? 5-5. Five, five. See, Kuroda lives on a fucking different plane from the rest of us. But he, his number is more valid than my number. It's just weird to think that one player can say 8-2 and another player can say 5-5. Five, five. A lot of these electricities could have been super cancelled, I feel. This is death? Yeah. He has the Bernie X? Nope, he doesn't. I thought he did. I thought I was going to be back medium kick EX spin hook. Don't really like that mirror, but he's gotten quite a lot of damage out of it and a setup. Very nice mirror placement. About as optimal as you can get for a neutral mirror. That one's not very good at all. Still got a win out of it. Damn, when you get a perfect and then the opponent gets a perfect back. Anyone know how that is? Anyone ever had the perfect sandwich? Where you get a perfect and they get a perfect and then you get a perfect? I've had that a few times ever. It's always funny. It's like, wow, we're clowns. That was a really bad crush fierce. That was probably a punish low forward. You know what's a really bad feeling? I've had this a million times. Is when you get a perfect between two losses. Nice parry. See how the hit stun was super long because he hit the mirror? So he was still whiffing that low strong in the middle of that fucking jump in. Every now and then I used to do a thing where like I would look watch people's replays and like tell them, give them some advice. And frequently, before I specified, people would send replays of them getting like a double perfect. It's like fucking, Baf, can you tell me how I can get better at Street Fighter 4? And then they would send me, the fucking footage they would send me would be like, you know, two perfects in a row. It's like, no, I have no advice for this. Or like sometimes I would, usually not. But it's like, wow. You should have sent me someone you couldn't beat. I thought that would be really obvious. The thing about that that you wouldn't think is that almost every single one ended up being exactly the same. Which was the lack of anti-airs and then giving up space for free. It's unbelievable how frequent that is. Especially when people are new to fighting games. In SF4 that was like invariably. It's like what can I do to get better and then they just never anti-air. And they just constantly walk back. It's like if you just fix this. That'd be a huge step. Oh, thank you. Hakana would be actually happy with. If I'm being honest, the, w the way they could find random shit to do with Hakan in the V system would be fun as fuck. They could just give him a focus attack. For his uh, V skill. Just fuck it. Just give it to him. Just give him a functional focus attack. He uses all the same shit with it. Nice. Excuse me. Fujiwara is real fucking good. He's one of the best Dudleys ever. That's a really cool um, light machine gun blow through the mirror. I'm jealous when I see Dudley fucking how easily he can land super. It's like, oh, let me land a far strong. 
And then let me just ducking super. Oh no, he missed the second one. Is that still combo? I think it did. So he didn't get the confirm, but it hit, so it didn't matter. <laughs> Planned. I mean, it's it's still a true 50 50. Just wasn't confirmed. Pinku Tai Pinku, he said. I think Tai is versus in that context. Pink against pink. If it's a link from Crouch, that was Crouch like kick, wasn't it? If it's a link, that might be possible. To confirm off of a single hit. This is probably a pretty fair matchup. I don't know for certain without like looking, but I wouldn't be surprised at all to find out it's 5-5. Five five. Uh, Dudley has some really high damage corner combos on Makoto, which is kind of cool. Dudley's jump is also so short that he can douche jump um, Karakusa and reliably punish it. Those are two really big weapons against Makoto. Dudley's tiny jump is a big weapon here. Makoto also can't touch a dizzy Dudley, I think. Whoa. Uh, was that a failed Seeper? Was it a failed EX Machine Gun Blow? We'll never find out. Couch cancelling? I don't know what you mean. I can only picture Alpha 3 couch cancelling. Tominaga 3? This is Tominaga versus everyone? Tominaga can lose up to three times. Oh, yeah, that works. That works. Not only does that work mechanically, but you can do the things. Oh, yeah, he's, he's using Super 3. I didn't even notice that. Super 3, I thought it was a meme, but now I think it's not a meme. And the reason is our life. I did a little bit of research on that. And man, it's like actually real. It's definitely her worst super, but it's viable. I would just burn the X here. Tommy did. Oh, that dizzy bar is looking kind of... Yeah. That's a surprisingly hard link to get. Makoto has very little blocks done on her, or hits done on her jump heavies. And jump fierce is, or stand fierce is very slow. This is Barnian. He's a different guy from Piero. If I changed Makoto in this game, I would make it so um, Dash Punch is just super cancelled. I see no reason she can't do that. Fuck the SA1 link. Just make it a cancel. Just make it free. I don't give a fuck. And then that would also add a Dash Punch SA3 into like links, like SA4 style. And that'd be fun. Now this is regular Tominaga. Yeah, that move already does a beefy amount of damage. <laughs> Throw in some modifiers and it's just fucking amazing. Cold Blue Kick is a surprisingly good move. It looks like the kind of thing that would just get absolutely fucked up by parries, and it is. But parrying it on reaction is not easy. Aw. That confirms here. That was the correct play. <laughs> this should dizzy with regular dash punch. That was like max meter build. Best dashes in the game is probably Makoto. By the frames, the shortest duration dash is Ryu, I think tied with Sean. Um, Makoto goes a lot farther though. And I, I would, mm, they're both really good. 
Makaros is more of a weapon because of her base kit. Being able to dash in and command grab is very powerful. But Ryu's dash is very slightly faster than Makoto's. Like one frame or something, or two. It's like a 14 frame dash versus like a 15 frame dash or something like that. Makoto's goes like twice as far as Ryu's though. That was towards Jab as a take. Different. Ooh. There's a lot of metrics to weigh dashes. Ibuki can do some novel things with her dash. It's pretty bad, but she can do some novel things with it. For example, there are a lot of supers where she can get one parry and then dash, and then she dashes out of the super because her dash travels through the opponent. So she can get sometimes she can get a jump in punish in a scenario where a lot of other characters just get regular punishes. Oh, I missed it. That was pretty dominant. Is this the Tomi Kumite? Um, Remy's is surprisingly good for the kind of character he is. I would call it one of the... I don't know if I'd call it one of the better dashes in the game, but it's an extremely good dash. Both the forward and the back dash. He's, like, very mobile. It seems like he would be, like, one of those kind of sit-in-place kind of characters, but actually his movement is great. His jump is not so great, though, and I think his super jump is pretty mediocre. Elena has a really bad super jump. Pretty good dashes, though. It's too late for Remy and SF5. We've already got Gal and Nash. What are we going to do with the third one? Oh, that was kill. That actually was kill on the Jump Fierce. He could have reacted to that and won off of it. Oh! Ooh, why not Super, though? Okay, was that a Link? Did he get it? That's a tight Link. Oh, baby. <laughs> the commentator was saying the same thing. He was like, four hit. Good Link. Crutching opponent only, I think. I mean, I like Remy's character a lot. But I hate Remy's character. I like Remy's design. His character is kind of funny, I guess. It depends on how much they make it, like, you know, how much they play up the irony of it. Seeing as he's literally just a parody of Iori. Oh no, there's a 100% chance he would have a counter B trigger. Ah, uh, Snowrun House is a poke in this matchup. I see it every now and then, it's kind of cool. Snowrun House is a good button. Lena has good buttons. I thought neutral jump light kick? I don't like that. Unless he lands like a parry into super, this is looking really hard. Now it's looking impossible. Avoiding chip in this matchup is difficult. That was probably like... That probably wasn't even cancelled into dash punch, but if it was, that would be horrible. Yeah. I think Fong's is actually one of the better ones. Mm, maybe not, because the V-meter build on V-skill 1 is really free. Everything else about it kind of sucks. But it is like basically free view meter. I think probably Makoto could get away with picking V skill 2 in most matchups and it wouldn't be bad. I think your V skill 1 in most matchups is pretty useless and the addition of a parry is kind of welcome for a character who only has like 3 frame armor. Nash died. I think the chances of Nash retiring in SF6 are basically zero. Nash is a fucking corpse. He exploded. Didn't you play the story mode? Oh, 
That's true, he was a corpse even before he exploded. That's true. Maybe they just made another Nash. Honestly, they could just have fucking, you know, Eleven turn into Nash in a sequel. It's like, here's Nash. The Peter story. Yeah, but that's Mortal Kombat. The Netherrealm is a place you can go to in Mortal Kombat. People blatantly still exist after they're killed. He has a brain meter to kill there, and he chose not to because he's fucking. Why would you? That jump, both of them were like super cautious there. It's kind of funny. <gasps> this could, this could almost be it. Ooh, Ugh. that was parryable. I think I don't think that was a punish. We already had Zombie Nash, and he exploded. They already did it like Zombie Luke Kang. I think the zombie Liu Kang wasn't even like a revenant Liu Kang. He was just like a mindless corpse. I love that Liu Kang was dead for the entirety of Mortal Kombat X, and yet the um, pre-battle dialogue assumed that he was alive, unless you pick the Revenant Liu Kang specifically. This is, yeah, this is the Makoto. This is Tominaga. He's probably like the second or third best Makoto in the world, but he's a candidate for the first best. It depends on who you ask. The actual best, I don't know. Hard to say. Maybe good old Mr. Boss. Maybe Mr. Momochi. That was a good, um, good confirm right at the end. Managed to sneak it back. Remember the ending for Adon in like Alpha Three? I think had it implied that he was gonna fight Akuma. And maybe Akuma killed him. I don't remember. I don't remember if it showed who, like... I, I seem to recall there was one... I feel like it was Adon. There was, like, an ending where the character fought Akuma, and then the ending just had Akuma standing with his back to the screen with his fucking... The Ten. The Heaven on the back. Wow. This is SA1 Tominaga. Yeah, it is. <laughs> the 10. I meant the 10, like, tanky. It has a bunch of different readings. Sky is one of them. Heaven is one of them. I think they've said in interviews that it's supposed to be uh, for uh, for Akuma. It's supposed to be um, what is it? I already forgot. Ooh, good cancel. That was an empty cancel on the list strong. Eternity or something like that. I think it's not divine. It's something else. Gen is probably not dead. Gen was supposed to be dying in Alpha, and then hadn't appeared for a while. He, I think Alpha 3's ending implied that he was dead. He wanted one last good fight before he died. He was, like, dying of leukemia. What are these characters? That's... Um, how do you pronounce that? I feel like... I don't know if that's an actual con kanji combination. It's uh, Nin and then Shin. But I don't know if they have a, a real pairing. If they do have a pairing, it's probably in the inverse order. Uh, 
Nice. Kiraki's killing it. The Tom. Rude. Is Tommy Naga nothing with that SSA too? Turns out everyone versus Tommy, everyone won. Akuma, based on the comics, is about 10 years younger than Goken, but we don't have an age on either of them. Gen is a grandfather, I think. Right? I don't remember the actual relationship. I think it's been retconned. Originally, Gen was Lee's dad, I think. And Lee's the father of the, um... Uh... Yan and Yang. But now they might, might be some uncle kind of stuff. You see that shit in real life every now and then. By those 10 years apart. I can't even imagine them retconning Heihachi's death. But I can't imagine, like, fucking a spiritual Heihachi in a future game for no reason. I mean, they could just put in Ghost Heihachi and I wouldn't blink. Imagine if they put in fucking... They put, they put Combat back in. And Combat uses Hombat... Uh, Heihachi's moveset. Remember Combat? The way you say my small sister kind of makes it sound like your parents had a shitload of kids. Is that true? I feel like it's a little different. Maybe you got a bunch of siblings. But we don't even know that they're the only two siblings. There might be other fucking Go's besides Goken and Goki. They need to introduce uh, another character who's a Heihachi bastard son, and then he can use Heihachi's moveset. What do you guys think? Aren't there like two Heihachi bastards now? Heihachi raised Lee. Um, Kazuya is the actual son. And then also there's, um, what's his face, Lars. Is there another one or is that it? I think they hinted to Jinpachi not having the double gene. I think that was like, I think uh, that was Harada or someone said that in an interview back in Tekken 5 era. Kuma. Yeah, Kuma's the extra. Kuma, Kuma fights like Hayachi in Tekken 8. That would actually be really cool. Yeah, Lee, like, doesn't give me much of a Chinese vibe, if I'm being honest. The name does, Lee Shalon. That's about it, though. Do you guys remember the fucking two games that Paul Phoenix was a serious character? The only thing Chun Li's done that actually felt Chinese was greet uh, Yun in Chinese in Street Fighter. Um, Street Fighter 3. That's the only time she's been Chinese in her life. And the way she dresses. Oh, did not get the link, but Makoto committed. She does say Shesha. But her little wind pose where she jumps in, up and down in place, that's like, that's like something you would give to like a fucking Japanese schoolgirl, and not like a, not like a fucking Chinese ICPO agent.
Is she from Hong Kong? I thought she wasn't. They got like a separate flag for all the characters from Hong Kong, don't they? I don't remember actually. Who is from Hong Kong in Street Fighter? Anyone? The twins? Oh, look at them taunts. Nice. Ah, sh you hate to see it. That drops a ton of damage. Sakura is slightly younger than Ryu, like a year or something. And Chun Li's like in her 30s. She's not like 40s. Chun Li was pretty young in SF2, and not much time has passed since then. Yeah, I think Chun Li's actual China. Is there another Chinese character? Uh, F F Fong, I guess, right? He's from China. He feels Chinese. He's got big Chinese energy. Gen! And Lee. Nowadays, they might be from Hong Kong. I think Gen had a Chinese flag in Street Fighter 4, Vanilla, back when they had flags. They removed them in Super onwards. That could have been a Super Confirm. He could have won. Gen has moderately high Chinese energy. Fei has good Chinese energy. Good Hong Kong energy. Gen was on the Chinese stage in Street Fighter 1. He was the boss of China. There was uh, Mike and Joe from America, Lee and Gen from China, Aidan and Sagat from Thailand, um, Birdie and Eagle from England. Who am I forgetting? Japan? Reki, uh, Retsu and Geki. I couldn't think of their names in Japan. And then Ryu from Japan and Ken from the US, I suppose. It's the entire roster of Street Fighter 1. Not only does um, Rashid have a smartphone, but so does C Viper, and so does Elena. It's like a moving timeline, it doesn't matter. You can fight representing any country. Ken is Japanese American. He's like three quarters Japanese, but he fights representing America. Gen is 100% Japanese and fights representing America. Did I say Gen? I meant Guy. Guy is 100% Japanese. It was a punish. He had a 100% reliable win there. Guy is like not only 100% Japanese, but he's also a bit of a xenophobe, from what I can tell. And he still fights representing America. He loves Metro City that much, clearly. <laughs> the Taekwondo on jury is just obligatory. It's just like, hey, like this is the ta this is the Korean martial art. Nice. Me slaps from just out of range. 
is winnable. Uh, there it goes. Every single Korean character in all fighting games fights with Taekwondo that I can think of. I was going to say, um, what's his face? Hwarang uses quite a lot of real ta Taekwondo, right? Pretty sure. I wouldn't be surprised if Beck did as well. I don't know about him, though. But Hwarang seems to. Nice. 2D games almost always have a bunch of shit you couldn't do in real life. Look at fucking Gengyo. He like fucking jumps and does fucking dive kicks on you. Imagine a dive kick in real life. Oh, that was a throw tech combo into Mirror. I think you can parry that, but you're like airborne, so you can't block it. It's really weird. <laughs> You're like airborne for a, th a throw tech. K-pop character? I think they almost added one. Isn't that like almost what Lucky Chloe is? What nationality is she? It's probably something super weird knowing, um, knowing Tekken. I don't know what she is. She seems to be some kind of pop star. Big damage. What about Sylvie Pami Pamio? Yeah, there you go. Is that her name? Sylvie Pami Pami? Something like that. Paula Paula. Is she Korean? Pamu sounds... Or not Pamu Paula. Sylvie Paula Paula doesn't sound like fucking Asian anything. I think I was thinking of the actual fucking person that she's based on. Shonae seems to be an appeal to the kind of, I don't know what to call it. It's like what teenagers are into. It's like, it's like shonen protag levels. What is she? I just want to know the nationality. Nice. I mean, all most characters in street, in fighting games are tokens. It's kind of cool when you get like you've had enough of the token characters that you can start having some regular ones. It's like we've already had our fucking token Americans with uh, Balrog and Guile, so now they can add a new American and not have it be like blatantly token. Now they can add in characters like, well, is T Viper token? Now you can have characters like Cody. Only cool Aussie character? What about Marduk? Marduk's cool. He's cool as fuck, isn't he? I think so. Yeah, I know she's a token secret agent, but is can you really call that token American? <laughs> I think, um, I think, um, I think Japanese people don't know what the fucking English person is, based on Birdie and Eagle. They're definitely not token. Kemi isn't either. So they did a very nice job with the English, English characters, I think. Well, I'm not against tokenism, a little bit. It can be kind of fun. It depends on whether it's tasteful. Dudley being English is good.
He's a bit token. I mean, like, when you think of, like, fucking token English character, it's probably, like, fucking sip tea and say yes quite. And that's, um, that's Dudley. Dudley's the kind of guy who sips tea and says yes quite. Yeah, Teok's an oof token. I remember reading that, um... A lot of Mexican people hated T-Hawk, and then I remember reading that it was super split for El Fuerte. It was like some people loved him, and some people didn't like him. A token character is a character added just for inclusi inclusivity, and for no other reason. So it's like, okay, like let's have an English character, and then it's like, well, what's true about English people? Let's just make this character all of those things. And there's, sometimes that can make sense. It's like, you know, well, the fucking guy from Mexico, he's a masked wrestler. They do that over in Mexico. So, you know, that's cool. But then sometimes it's like, um, you know, sometimes sometimes it's like, would this, would, <laughs> would this random fighter really be doing this? What are the odds that, like, the random fucking... I don't know, I can't think of a good example. I do appreciate that, like, Honda is a blatant Japanese token. You know what I mean? They didn't exempt themselves. If you were like gonna write a fucking, if you didn't know shit about Japan and you were gonna write a Japanese character, it would probably be like something like Honda. It would be like, well, he likes fucking Chonko stew, and he's a sumo because they do that in Japan. And let's stop there. I think Cody's good because he doesn't have. A, he has. He has. His token qualities are more subtle. I should say they're not really token. He does feel like an American, but he doesn't feel like the things that you would just instantly go to if you wanted to show a character was American. Cool. <laughs> Canada's still in North America. I don't know if there's a real human anywhere that's like Abigail. Nice. He has seven children. I know the exact number. Yeah. I mean, like, token doesn't necessarily mean good or bad. It's all about how much, I mean, how people react to that kind of thing. I fucking love Giles' design, but it's definitely, like, American tokenism. It's like, um, the thing about it is that it's... For a lot of Japanese people, their main exposure to Americans outside of media is um, people on bases in Amer in Japan, because there's a lot of uh, like Air Force bases in Japan and Army, I think as well. Probably all of them. Um, so like the only Americans that Japanese people see are fucking uh, soldiers. Not only that, but um, Americans on average are much taller than Japanese people by like five inches or something like that. 
And also, people on military bases are probably going to be really fit. So that's like the, the Japanese standard of Americans is usually like huge and muscular. Brazil. Brazil will get the next um, giant retard. Mark my words. Save this video. The next big and dumb of the Street Fighter universe will be Brazilian. Rufus is a token American. Rufus is funny. I don't know if I'd call it annoying quality. Like, it's annoying on purpose. And it, it, it rubs me the right way. I can see that people wouldn't like it. But also, he's like a he's a character played for laughs. But it's a, actually, I think it's a really intelligent play for laughs. Uh, Steve Fox is from Tekken. I mean, from the UK in Tekken. Laura is Brazilian. She's Brazilian Japanese. If I was Brazilian, I'd be fucking ecstatic to have Laura. I'd be like, hell yeah. She's cool. Ah, the double parry and he still couldn't get a punish. I think you can double parry back though and it's reliable. <laughs> he jumped into the mirror. Based. Two redeeming qualities, only two? Is one of them that she's hot? She is hot. Hmm. A Swedish character? What if they make a Finnish character? How will you feel? North Europe gets no love. There's a disturbing lack of like Dutch characters, I feel. Isn't that kind of weird? Doesn't it feel like there should be like a bunch of Dutch characters? I can't think of any, but I'm sure there's one. Who's a Dutch character in fighting games? French. Isn't there a French guy? Isn't like one of the Soul Calibur, the fucking the fencer, isn't he French? Raphael. Abel's French, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Kami as well. Oh, you don't need a fighting style to make a character a nationality. <laughs> Vegas fighting style is fucking ninjutsu. And they're just like, oh, well, he's a bullfighter. It's like, shut up. That was probably not a whiff punish. <laughs> it's not a matador or a ninja or a fucking Spanish person at all. But it's kind of cool and novel. I think that with Vega, they were just trying to make a generic European. And yodeling was one of the things they were just like, okay, cool combo. Let's run house there. A lot of damage on that. 
it really makes Vega feel a lot more like a like a Europe every man kind of thing. It makes him feel like, you know, varied, I guess. It's, that's not quite the word I'm looking for. Complex, something like that. That makes it feel like there's more there than what we see. Like flexible, I guess. It makes him feel the opposite of like, you know, a token. It makes it feel like it's it's not just he's not just a collection of qualities you would expect from every single person of that fucking country. Isn't Miguel Spanish? He's cool as fuck. If I was to describe the coolest character that you could possibly make in any media, my description would be almost exactly Miguel. I'd be like, oh, he's, I don't know, he's vengeful. He's angry about something. And he fights super casually. But also he's super powerful. I would also like fucking visually design him that way. Miguel's a perfect... Wow, beefy! Token Texas fighter. Um, people like to think that um, Guile is Texan. There's no, there's not much real evidence for it, but a lot of people are like, eh, probably Fort Worth. If you look at the American characters, it's like, um, Ken might be California. Alex, certainly New York. What, Balrog Vegas, I guess? Nevada? I don't know where the fuck Metro City is supposed to be. Oh, that guy came in right at the start of the stream and asked me to check out a clip and I never clicked on it. And I just suddenly realized now. It might be New York, I don't know. Detroit. Oh, I like Detroit. Yeah, it's Detroit. It's fucking Michigan. Oh, that's a punish for the kill. Well, it should have been. Good lord. It was hard to get a kill punish there. Or not like super hard. Oh no, Remy! Eat that and lose instantly. Did that really combo? No, it didn't. <laughs> that looked so far apart and it was. Oh, there you go. Punish. Oh, this is stun? No, that was good, that was good. Great flash kick. Yes. That would be a quick and easy fix. Meter for throwing fireballs. Would make Remy ten times as good. I once had it pointed out to me that um, the way that other countries... The way that Americans see Texas is the way that other countries see America. And I thought that was pretty funny. And I started thinking of American stereotypes of Texas, and I was like, oh shit, this might have something to it. I think I've talked about it in a stream before. How do you pronounce that? Tira? Yeah, they said it a lot, Tira. You don't see that kind of writing very often. 
America has a decent amount of um, cultural homogeny, but not total cultural homogeny. You can generally take an American out of any state, and they're pretty similar. Or, like, to a much greater degree, at least, than, like, you know, just a random person out of, like, fucking England. Where people can have whole-ass different accents for different fucking cities. Different neighboring cities, I should say. Ah, good old sweep. It's really just a lot of cultural homogeny for how big the United States is. Well, you would expect less for the size of the country. There is stuff like that here. And, like, when you look at immigrants, they can be fucking, like, whatever fucking country they're from. It's really just the, the fucking uh, wasps that are all the same. You guys ever heard that term? It's white Anglo-Saxon uh, Protestant. Ooh, that was actually a really good EX stomp. I was thinking that would be an easy parry, but he didn't even go for it. Avoid strong poke. Oh. Uh, his punish was bad. He had accidental charge. He didn't want it. He wanted like walk in medium kick. And he got fucking what I think was medium um medium slash elbow. He got fucked up. Um, Alex is pretty bad, but he actually sees a decent amount of play. My personal tier list puts Alex um, fourth from the bottom, but traditional tier lists usually put him around um, maybe like six or seven from the bottom, or eight. Yeah, USA probably has the highest immigrant variety of any country. I wouldn't be surprised. I consider that a virtue. I'm surprised anyone thinks it's a problem. I get that it can be hard to, like, fucking make laws that accommodate all the fucking different people. If everyone in the country acted and thought the same, then it would be really easy to fucking do stuff. Make rules around that. But I think the rules you get for accommodating fucking people of different groups are, overall, just uh, better for everyone. Fairer. Ugh. I learned a lot of melting pot stuff in school, and now I'm an adult. A lot of people seem to not like it, and it's a shame because I thought it was neat. It was like, oh, like all these different people fucking from many one kind of bullshit. America's fucking strength is the is the variety of the fucking nationalities of the people who live here. That we're all fucking working together despite that. And then uh, I turn into an adult, and everyone's like, wow, I hate these immigrants. It's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't need to know you existed. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, like, there's so many just blatantly positive things about having a bunch of different cultures. And one of them, for example, is food. 
if someone's like, man, I really like fucking Gyro. And then they open up like a fucking um, Greek place, you know? And then I go to the Greek place and I eat the Greek food and I'm like, yes. What's the downside? Just recently it was fucking Lunar New Year and I was like, hmm. Maybe I should celebrate. I didn't, but I could have. Oh, nice. That can fall out sometimes, didn't there? I don't think I've ever had Lebanese food. Ah, it fell out. I fucking love Indian food. I fucking love Thai food. I fucking love Italian food. That's my top three. Post your top three. That's my top three in that order. Indian, Thai, Italian. Does that punish look good? Dude, what is up with Italian food? Do they eat bread there? They also have pasta. What's up? Am I like a fucking carb bomb? I had this pointed out to me and it fucking blew my mind. Mexican's great. Um, the tomato's a new world vegetable. It was not discovered until the Americas. Is that not crazy to think about? Italian is like fucking utterly known for what they do with tomatoes. But the tomato didn't even fucking exist until like the 1500s. 1600s. As far as Italy's concerned. What were they doing before then? Potatoes are um, new world. When a lot of people think of like UK, like peasant food, you know, it's like what did fucking people eat? What did the fucking I don't know the the random peasants and the fucking serfs or whatever? What did they eat? People usually picture fucking potatoes, but they didn't have potatoes. Did they have yams? I don't know. Probably parsnips, thinking about it. People probably ate parsnips. Ireland. Yeah, Ireland. What were they eating before they had potatoes? I'm telling you, dude, parsnips. Someone look up where parsnips were originally from. Don't forget random birds. It's like, oh, time for some dove. Time for some sparrow pie. You eat what you got. They had birds. They had fish. I was, like, alarmed to find out in Australia they eat both kangaroo and emu. I, was, I guess I wasn't surprised about emu. I, I would eat an emu in a heartbeat. But eating kangaroo, I was caught off guard. I was like, whoa. Not ready for that. You can just go into a restaurant and order kangaroo meat and they'll have it. 
wonder what it's like. When I hear eating kangaroo, I think of like eating rabbit. I think like, yeah, it's probably technically edible, but it wouldn't be something I would think that people would just like eat. We got confirmation. Kangaroos taste nice, but very gamey. Every kangaroo I've ever seen is terrifying. I guess they're kind of cute. I've seen too many, like, ripped kangaroos. They're, like, fucking weirdly muscular. I saw a video of a guy's dog like running near a kangaroo and the kangaroo kind of chasing it and then a fucking random guy like goes up to the fucking kangaroo and the kangaroo squares up against him and the guy punches the kangaroo in the fucking face and then both the guy and the fucking kangaroo stare at each other for like 10 seconds and then um while well, the dog runs away and then the fucking um guy runs away too and the kangaroo fucks off and um I saw a comment on that video that was like Dog being a dog, lad being a lad, kangaroo being a kangaroo. It was like something like that. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Yeah, that's right. The kangaroo was attacking the dog. And the guy punches it. If you like mince it, I wouldn't give a shit about eating insects. I think I would have a really hard time eating a cricket without mincing it. But if you mince it, I won't care. Give me the fucking cricket burgers. I'll eat them. I haven't seen an equipment one of these in a little while. I guess we saw one a little ways away. Was that light? No, was that medium to medium tattoo? That was weird looking. I had, um, someone showed up. Is that Light Tatsu? No, it's gotta be medium. Light Tatsu only has one hit, I think. I don't remember if Light Tatsu can have a startup hit if you're, like, super close or something like that. Um, there were people who went to my school when I was super young. Who were like, come try some fucking insect. Live ground chicken I would also eat in a heartbeat. I don't give a fuck. I was wondering why Akuma didn't DP there. Like, DP Super Out was a really good wake-up option, but he did, like, reversal, I think, uh, Demon Flip. Aw, uh, so much for that. No Akuma for us. Anyway, there are people who came to my school who were like, eat a cricket and a fucking piece of chocolate. And it was literally, like, fucking dried crickets inside chocolate that you could just eat. And it basically tasted like slightly crunchy chocolate. It's kind of a novel idea, I guess. It was like, oh, check it out. Like, you know, in some places in the world, they eat fucking insects. How would you like to try eating an insect? I don't think I have one. I really did. Was the children's book How to Eat Fried Worms? Because I remember that book. I read it at some point. Akuma's pretty rare. Not super rare. He's not as common, he's noticeably less common than Ryu and Ken, but he's still like a somewhat common character. I w opened that expecting like a fucking book uh, lesson on how you eat fried worms, but then it was a cool little kid story. Good title. Got me to open it. And then once I opened it, it was fucking a nice little read. I remember that book. Love that combo. Holy shit. How fun. We're already breeding a zillion crickets for food. Might as well have humans eat them. You can buy 3D crickets anywhere. I hear they have high, pre high protein. 
Uh, probably not a good trade. Maybe a good trade. Got him out. I kind of like Remy here. It's hard to say. Now I love Remy here. Ugh, why would you not? Why would you not just do something normal? He still got it though. Why do you parry into fucking cold blue kick? Why not just any button? Why not medium kick? Massive spiders that they prepare and eat like crab taste similar. I think s crabs and spiders are somewhat related, aren't they? Crustaceans and arachnids, I think they're not too far apart. But also, I wouldn't think they'd be close enough that they would taste really similar. Imagine how many mosquitoes you need to eat to get a good meal. They're like ants. I think arachnids are pretty closely related to like... I forget. It's like spiders, then scorpions, then like crustaceans a little ways off of that. Humans have a natural aversion towards spiders. Like an inherent and instinctual one. I remember reading about that. You can show a baby a picture of a bear and the baby doesn't know how to be doesn't know to be afraid of it. It's just like, oh it's a fucking bear. But you can show a baby a picture of a snake or a spider. Most animals they don't give a shit. But snakes and spiders, humans are afraid of them even when they don't know what they are. Humans have inherent fear of snakes and spiders. Probably an evolutionary thing. Probably like, you know, those were things that killed us. Went back when we were fucking roaming, um, roaming forests and shit. Living in caves. If you're a gorilla or something, I would think that snakes would be one of the main things that could just randomly kill you. And that also probably goes for proto-humans. I mean, you can just be afraid of other stuff too. If you're afraid of wolves, I would call you wise. Or bears. I would not want to fuck with a bear. But people are apparently not instinctually afraid of bears. I'm not afraid of snakes or spiders, I don't think. But I don't fuck with them if they're not fucking with me. I can't think of a reason I would fuck with a spider or a snake, you know what I mean? Like, I might hold out a tarantula if you hold it out to me. And you're like, hey, hold my tarantula. I might do it. I'd probably take your tarantula. Or if you had, like, a fucking corn snake or something like that. I probably wouldn't give a shit. But if I saw a snake in the fucking, in nature, in the wild, I would not get within 10 feet of that thing. I'd probably get just outside 10 feet and I would look at it. Oh. That was cool. If it was like a snake that I knew to be venomous, if it was like a fucking rattlesnake or a fucking cottonmouth or something, I would give it a lot of space. If it was just a random snake, I'd probably kind of look at it and then I'd be like, okay, I looked at the snake and then I would leave. You know what looks like the worst is fucking camel spiders. Apparently they're like pretty harmless, right? But they look terrifying. Jesus Christ. I can't imagine living in a place where camel spiders exist. If something destroys a kunai on the frame that the super activates, the character regains control during the super freeze. It's hilarious. That could have happened there. Didn't know. And then you can move during the super freeze to um, get out of the way of the super. I've had that happen a few times in real matches. I'd rather fuck with a snake that choked me than a snake that fucking poisoned me. To be honest. Give me the fucking... Boas. Don't give me the venomous snakes. Funnel web spiders. That sounds like something I wouldn't fuck with in general. I've seen funnel webs. I think I've seen a National Geographic or something on those guys. I was thinking this at work pretty recently. You guys might find this a funny thought. Not so recently anymore. This year, I think. What the fuck do spiders do? 
you ever think about that? Like, yeah, they spin webs, and then they wait. A spider seems to spend about 80% of its wife, life waking, uh, waiting. It's literally an animal that just sits there and waits. And then anytime their fucking web gets destroyed or something, they just make a new web. And it only takes them like an hour or something to make a web, doesn't it? It's like a, not too long. It's like not as long as you would think. Or like a few hours. But generally speaking, they just do nothing. They just sit on their web. I think about that at work because I work with in a place with a zillion spiders. And I just ignore them. They're no dangerous ones. They literally just sit in place and wait. What are they thinking about? They must have like a, at least a teeny tiny bit of fucking um, uh, capacity for thought. Probably not a lot, but probably a little bit. Are they happy when they're sitting on the web? Do you think about that? Do they have like a fucking simpler version of happiness? Ants seem to have a quite complex behavior. Great super, great counterplay. I always thought like, you know, insects just did shit automatically. But like bees and bees and ants seem to do they seem to have actual like levels of communication going on. Bees can like s describe locations to each other using dances. So there's definitely interpretation going on. An ant might just be following a fucking scent trail or something, but the the bee is actually saying shit to other bees. That's pretty simple. They have pretty simple messages. I think it's pretty obvious that every animal has some degree of like, you know, they're doing something because they, they want to do it. It might just be really fucking simple, but it's there. But I don't know about a spider. It might be like, might be almost nothing. That was a good jump, I think. Got him out of the scenario. I think that was not super cancelable. I wake up Perry with a one. People always talk about whether like various animals can feel pain, right? Like crabs or fish or babies, actually. It's like, well, babies fucking don't have that yet. But um, you can see like pain avoidance either way in like crabs or fish. They will avoid harmful stimuli. Maybe it's not the way we experience it, but, you know. I forget the logic that um, lobsters don't feel pain, but that's a really common one. I think it's that their central nervous system is not connected to their fucking... Their nervous system is not connected to their brain or something like that. Something like that. I remember reading something at some point that, like, blew my mind... That was like, there's evidence that, um, ooh, that red was so good. There's evidence that all the nerves in your body have some capacity for thought, not just the ones in your central nervous system. Oh, Tommy, should have let her come down and then command grabbed her. So like, um, the mus the nerve endings in your arm are connected only very loosely to your brain through fucking other nerve endings. But, like, there's evidence that fucking nerve endings in your arm might have, like, capacity for very simple thoughts. Some bullshit like that. And I was like, that that sounds crazy. I don't know about anything about memories. I, I, I heard it was, like, a decision-making kind of thing. It was like, um... You can touch something hot, and then... 
your arm can yank away because of the nerve endings interpreting a harmful stimulus before the stimulus even reaches your brain. Your nerve endings in your fucking hand are like, pull away. Abort. This is bad. <laughs> Most of my streams are long. It's rare I have a stream shorter than three hours. I find that concept fascinating, and it kind of almost makes sense considering there's only like two different kinds of nerve endings anyway. So I like, we don't really have a good idea of how brains work, but it wouldn't be too surprising to think that um, nerves are nerves are nerves. <laughs> Imagine the fucking nerves in your fucking arm having thoughts. But there aren't as many of them, so maybe they're not complex thoughts. Well, when I start thinking about humans as fucking slightly electric meat, I get freaked out. But oh, that's all we are. The fuck is consciousness? How'd it come about? Oh, it's horse face. Yup. Love that combo. Hold up on. Water and dirt mixed together in a fancy way. A social construct? What I'm experiencing right now is definitely consciousness. I'm willing to bet you're experiencing it too. Huh. How are they not into a range? They both wiggled back like an inch. What's with these crouch jabs? That's not a good button. After that parry, like, low strong was a decent thing to do there. That's sad. He might have been able to get sand strong into EX slash LO. I mean, EX flash chop. Unfortunately, slash LO combos, um. Uh. You can't do after a parry. You guys want to know what's wild? I heard there was a guy who um, had no sight for his entire life and then had his sight restored somehow with like some fucking new surgery. And they were like asking him shit like, um, uh, can you like look at a key? Or like if you if you like held this, he knew what a key felt like, but it's like, can you look at this and like know what it is? And they like show him a key. And then when he actually holds it, he's like, oh, this is a key. Wouldn't you think that would be inherent, that you would just know based on the way it feels that you would be able to picture it? But that's something that, like, you know, it's something you learn to do. To match up what your eyes see and what your hands feel. It's not inherent. Someone looking at the fucking smooth side on one side and the bumpy side on the other side wouldn't necessarily know. Yeah, it's 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 been long theorized and it was tested. I don't know how recently, but at least somewhat recently. I don't know when though. Oh, this looks like me. Look, look, look. He used light super. I think that was light super. He dropped it just like I drop it. Oh, I love to see it. 
<laughs> yeah, it would show a blind person a cube, but you know it's a cube. Super cool thought. A mess of colors. Imagine never hearing in your life and having your hearing restored. That's a much more common one, I think. People having their hearing restored. I'm going to punish. I don't really like that super. There's like no way that could be something good. The two hits of chip is probably like the best you could have got out of it. It's hard to have a truly useless SA2. Oh. I would have parried that. I like the OS parry. Oh, this... Mm, 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 that was super, super awkward. This aura player is not impressing me that much. It's not horrible. I don't like the way he's playing neutral, though. Oh, this is big. I like this. Oh, I can't believe Alex just let that eat. Oh, he did the combo. He did the bath combo. Most auras don't do that. It seemed to be medium fireball. I always use heavy. I don't know why you would ever use medium. <laughs> that was the signature bath combo right there. That is an unused combo among aura players. I'm like the only one who does that. It's good too. There's no downside to it. It's just slightly higher damage on a unconfirmed close strong. I wonder if that combo will be in Street Fighter 5. hope so. He could have parried that. I did that same mistake earlier today. That's, you can just parry that every time. It happens before you commit. Alex has to do it really early to actually get over the fireball. Ooh, I would have parried that, and so did this Oro. This should kill. Light super. He bounced twice even with light? Or was that medium? He's alive. I would have uh, supered. Okay. That's uh, also a best standard, but I definitely didn't admit that. It's obvious. EX fireball, wait a second, EX stomp. In that beginning, that is quite difficult. I don't recognize this Aura's name. The first one, I think, is the red. And the second one is definitely man. Don't know the third one. The first one I think is just thread related. I don't know if it's thread per se. It's some thread adjacent word. I don't know. I get asked that question a lot and I honestly have no idea. The main two ways they could do it is Aura's regular Super 2 to be a Super, the green ball. But that would be very similar to Dalsim. And the alternative I think would be um, uh, the grab EX Super 1 would be a very, a very easy Super to make for Aura. But the thing I actually think they're going to do, well, I shouldn't say I actually, they could really do it any of these three ways. But it wouldn't be too weird for them to give them an install super. That would be really weird in the context of all the other characters, but it's okay to make Oro weird, you know what I mean? It's also possible they could just combine two of his existing supers to... That, is that going to... Okay, it, it reset juggle potential. That was unconfirmed. He could have died for that. It's also very possible Oro's going to have an EX Super. I think the easiest way to do it would be to do the Booger and Sun Supers for a regular and EX Super. And they cost the same, but one is just better. All right, not one is just better. One is they're for different things. What do they mean? I'm really curious about the meaning of the first kanji. Okay, I know the second one. It's just Otoko. Uh, what's the what's the own reading of that one? Don. Lord String? Thread Lace? Wow, I actually did know it. Cool. I knew the fucking kanji, guys. It really was Thread. Rare footage of Baff knowing a kanji.
That jump, I would have backdash there. Backdash on a throw would have allowed you to... Ooh, yeah, that's my salvage. Salvage is the wrong word, it's my convert. There's a lot of different things you can do there. Ooh. Oh, he got the no quick stand. That's super good. It was five stun too. <laughs> EX flash kick. Okay, jump and stomp. No, low short. Very good counterplay to people expecting jump and stomp. And just a relatively low risk option in general. I mean, what's Remy going to do if he parries that? Crutch fierce, I guess. I don't even know if that hits crutching Aura from that far away. Not that he was super far. I think so, but I'm not sure. Very good. Very good. Love watching me some more. Oh, this is death. <gasps> that was the wrong conversion in every level. It should have been just roundhouse. Roundhouse for the stun and then another roundhouse. Crutch Freeze was just completely wrong. That's like something you would do going into Super, but Super was the wrong play there. He didn't have to spend any meter to win. Two roundhouses, 100% of the time. I would have already won this round. Next round would already be going if it was me. Ugh. Skum is playing well. That could have been a converted super. I would have dropped that too. You can rock and firm to stand strong very easily with two hits. Ooh. Oh, he blocked. He blocked. We're going to see a fucking chip. No, he didn't. He didn't block. It looked like he walked back right before that hit. He must have like been caught direction ing. Caught neutral, trying to go to forward. Parry here is possible and not even that hard, but also there's a good chance you're going to get hit out of your parry. So it's also kind of unnecessary. If anything, you can take more damage trying the parry. The way Sakim is playing is pretty good. I like it. It's very lame. Lame is not bad, though. Lame makes it sound like I don't respect it. But he's playing really well. Ah, uh, that was nice. That's what I think good Akuma play looks like most of the time. It's just very safe, you know? Slow and cautious. Oh, Tatsu into Tatsu. I would hate this matchup as Yurian. Akuma makes it so unfun looking. What about Kanji? So basically, Japanese invented a bunch of words back when they fucking, you know, people just lived there before they had a writing system. Oh, okay, okay. We're deeper than that. Uh, kanji have... The same kanji have different pronunciations. Um based on how the word that they're in. <laughs> kanji are really fast to, to read, is one of the main reasons they use kanji. There's an extra level of interpretation. Oh, it was medium tatsu. God, I hate this matchup for Yurian. It looks so unfun. Basically, you can glance at a single kanji and get the meaning instantly, compared to um, um, hiragana, which takes up a lot more space, and you have there's like another level of interpretation. Also, uh, certain sentences can be like written identically. Certain words can be written identically, but use different kanji. A really, really easy example is uh, hayaku, which has two different kanji, but can mean early and can also be fast. So, you know, you want to use the right one. It removes ambiguity and it also takes up less space. Sentences are way more compact if they're written with kanji than if you write them with all hiragana. And yeah, again, they're also more ambiguous. Love this combo. So much damage. It's cool looking too. Kanji have an inherent meaning associated with them. It's 
What's kind of funny is a lot of Japanese people will know how to read a kanji, but will like write it slightly wrong. There's like tons of kanji that anyone could write, but then there's a lot of kanji where you would usually handwrite the actual word instead of the kanji. Or I should say you'd handwrite the hiragana. I remember seeing a thing about that. Because they do kanji like all the way into like high school, I think, in Japan. It's like there's a bunch that you'll just learn instantly, like fucking counting and shit. But then um, for words like fucking, I don't know. Here's one I like. Let me write some Japanese. This is a kanji I remember just because of how fucking ridiculously complex it was. Why is my cat meowing outside my door? Look at that second kanji. I wouldn't be surprised if a fucking native Japanese person didn't know how to write that. There's a lot of things that technically have kanji, but you never ever see the kanji. Like it's just lost in translation. One that makes me laugh is Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa is always written in uh, hiragana. But theoretically the Konnichi would be, Kon would be now, Ima. And the Nichi would be day. Theoretically, it just means today. Kon Nichi. But what's especially funny is they use those two kanji together and they pronounce it kyo, and that's, that's today. That's how you say today in Japanese. But theoretically, in like the olden golden days, Kon Nichi once meant today. But it doesn't really anymore due to like just changing language. Literally, at some point, it was like, how are you today, kind of thing. Konnichiwa do desu ka, something like that. I saw a parry. Two. Two parries, then he died. What are some other ones that are, like, never ever written out? There's a bunch. E is usually written in hiragana. But you occasionally see it in kanji. I shouldn't say occasionally. It's not That one's not super rare. But I often see it written in hiragana. The, the word for good. That one wasn't a super good example. Let me think of, um... Um, Gozaimasu has kanji, but you rarely see the kanji written out. Like in Ohio, Gozaimasu. That's the fucking kanji version. That's the one you'd always see. Pretty sure. The O, I think. Uh, the honorific O that you do before things. Like, you know, Hashi is like chopsticks, but sometimes you say Ohashi. There's like a bunch of things where you can put an O in front of it to make it a little bit more polite. I think there's an O for that. There's a kanji for that O. And it's like you rarely see it. I often see Nai written in hiragana, but it's got a kanji. Arimasen. Arimasen is a good one. There are Arimas. Arimasen. And it's this one, I think. You like never see that. It's never written that way. That I ever see at least, I don't know. How's that pronounced? Yo? 
I mean, it's still pronounced Arimasen in this context. But I think Yo is the other reading of that kanji. Or you? No. I think Yo. I think it's Yo. I don't remember. Yeah. There's tons where people just handwrite the fucking hiragana version. But, like, they, they can recognize the kanji version. Like, they could read it in a book and they would have no trouble. But writing it, they might, like, skip a stroke or something. They might do one of the radicals wrong. I was simultaneously surprised and unsurprised to learn that. There's like a really obvious kanji combination this is used in, and I can't think of what it is. There's like some super basic word that this kanji is part of. Is it Yume? I think so. Whoa. You. Why is it not typing in. Yume. That means famous. And the actual kanji is have name. Yumena. That's a person, that's a named person right there. That person has a name. They're famous. Must be the metaphorical name. Um, it's been a while now. It's been like seven hours. Six hours, 31 minutes. Give me a funny kanji combo. I'm ready. A lot of them are very sensible, and I appreciate that. Karate, empty hand. That's a really cool one. Oh. No, I've never been to Japan. I'm not so good with the traveling. Neck of foot. Is that like ankle? I recognize the foot kanji. I don't actually know the neck kanji. I think I learned it at some point. I recognize the ashi, though. Ashi, like leg and ashi foot. It's like the same word, but it's got two different kanji, I think. Oh, I'm definitely not a Japan expert. I wouldn't be able to have even a short conversation in Japanese. Especially not nowadays. Don't know about anyone else. This looks very unfun. I don't sleep. Ah, that cold blue kick. Large water. What's that? Is that like a fucking lake or something? I don't know the word for lake in Japanese, I don't think. Umi is ocean, I'm pretty sure. Mizu or Sui is water. It's the one right there. How's it pronounced? Is it fucking Daisui or something?
Scout mirrors are good. This is more like a Scout mirror. And thus is Cancerous. Flood. Big water is flood. Yes, Remy would be an actual decent character in any other Street Fighter. Oh, Mizu. Ah, oh, I went the other way on both kanji. I did their Chinese readings. Usually in kanji combos, you do the own readings on Yomi. But in a lot of like very native Japanese words... Even in the kanji combo, you do like the kunyomi. Yeah, actually. Yakisoba. Nice, good snatch. This is like a traditional Street Fighter matchup, which Street Fighter 3 doesn't have a lot of. Both these characters play pretty much by the books. It's like, let me zone you and let me fucking try and force my way in. Like, yeah, there's parries going on in the meanwhile, but the fundamental movement looks a lot like classic Street Fighter instead of new Street Fighter. I would probably prefer this for Remy. Yeah, there he goes. But it could have gone either way very easily. And Hugo was going to make out like a minute with the meter if he didn't win and if he didn't already have a massive amount of bar. That looked like stand like it canceled to command grab. Low run house. A lot of active frames on that at least. Pretty unsafe on block. That move has a godlike gimmick. It starts as a low and then becomes an overhead. Ooh. Uh. Never adds kanji. Yeah, the, I don't think there's any natively Japanese kanji that I'm aware of. There might be like a few. This is Ohira. It's so obvious that China would add kanji, but I've never thought about it. They can just make a new character whenever they want. Using existing radicals. You like have to to get new words, or else just use new combos of existing characters. Ah. Uh, that looks like a really annoying parry. I talked about this, I think, last time we talked about Japanese, but there are certain characters where the traditional, the traditional Chinese is more complex and the simplified Chinese is more simple. And my example was Gaku. In traditional Chinese, it's very complex, but in simplified Chinese, it's very simple. And the Japanese one uses a one that's more complex than the simple one, but less complex than the complex one, than the traditional one. It uses like one that China probably used at some point before it got even further simplified. That one. That is the one. The bottom part of that in uh, current Chinese is the the le. Like the same as like the taihola. I don't know how to call that kanji. I don't know if it exists in Japanese. I don't know. Oh, that mirror. It ended up being pretty good. It looked really awkward for a second. It's always funny when a Yurian shoots a mirror off the edge of the screen. Nice pickup. That one. That's the one. Oh, it's not the same. I thought it was this below the little top part here. Like the top part of this and then that. 
I'm talking about the current the current Chinese version of this character, simplified Chinese version. I swear I saw a character more simple than that. Oh, I don't like it. Even if that hit Yuri and it would have knocked him over. That's simplified. Maybe I'm thinking of a different character. <laughs> we'll never know. What I saw, I mean. I'd have to Google around, see if I could find it. Yes. Hello. I've been getting a lot of the these exact posts recently. I must be blowing up on the YouTube ever since Bad Balance. It feels like every time I stream there's a couple of people come in and they're like, wow, my first ever stream. Welcome. I don't stream a whole lot. These days it's usually a couple times a week. When I do stream, I usually stream for a long fucking time. It's usually shit like this. I have little um, binge periods with streaming. Fightcade, I feel like Fightcade 2 has like breathed life into competitive. Oh yeah, also it's just COVID. One, we have a really good online client for like playing ranked SF3 finally. And two, um, everyone's inside doing nothing. It's a good recipe for um, the strike to get popular again. Fightcade 2, yeah. If Fightcade's so good, why is there no Fightcade 2? Surprise, there is. It uses a new emulator. Instead of Final Burn Alpha, it's Final Burn Neo. And there are various slight improvements based on that. I couldn't give you hard numbers on why it's better. Lag seems to be less. Um, I don't know if they did something with input latency. The reground combo. <laughs> he did the taunt instead of the uppercut. Almost always people do the uppercut there. But he taunted. <laughs> he juggled it to taunt instead. I think the netcode is better. But that's what I was getting at with the less lag. And also, um, I don't know if it's just a ROM change or like a save state change or what, but um, the black bar issue never happens anymore. AFK people and toxic asses. Yup. Sounds like fight Cade. Less input delay. I thought I heard that, but I wasn't I wasn't confident enough to say it. A lot of the games now use save states. There was a save state that people used, I think, in Fight Cade one for like several games. But now I think it's just a save state that's like installed with the with the fucking emulator or something like that. So everyone just starts in third strike, for example, everyone just starts on event mode at character select in a two person lobby. I could not tell you about scan line filters. I'm indifferent to scan lines. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, 
Cool little combo. I don't like fucking Dudley's whiff throw animation. Do you ever like fucking see like a screenshot someone else posted of them playing a game on an emulator? And they've got like a million fucking filters on. They've got like fucking motion, or what do you call it? They got like the fucking blur and shit. He's trying to do ducking super. What do they call that filter where it like fucking bleeds the light colors together or whatever? This is Tominaga. He always runs that pink Makoto. Nice fucking... This is... I think this is close enough to the wall. No, he didn't do it. Maybe it wasn't. Yabuki's yeah, really small, so there's probably dead zones with her. Oh no, someone from Texas. I was reading about that in the news. The power was down for a super long time, right? At first I was like, who gives a shit if like the fucking power's off? I mean, like that's annoying, but you know. And then I like remembered that like heating is tied to that, and I was like, oh, this is actually catastrophic. Not only is there a super fucking cold front, and also all the fucking electricity's off, but also you're you can't you can't stay warm. You've got to wrap yourself in twenty blankets, five pairs of shoes. That went from me thinking that would be really annoying to me thinking this could kill you. <laughs> oh yeah. I got a million canes of food at my place, so I would be alright. I've got like a fucking backup soup stockade to last a month comfortably. It's kind of an accident, but kind of on purpose. I like soup. I would prefer not to eat soup room temperature from a can, but it would be possible. It would be a pretty fucking lousy meal, but it would be edible. I guess if you have fire, you can make boiling water. I guess if you have boiling water, you can put a can in it. Yeah, you can put the can over the fire. How about that? Skip the water step. <laughs> you guys would survive longer than me in the wilderness. Open the top of the can. Use a fucking, I don't know, something. An oven mitt. Fucking stick. Something to hold the can on. Hold the can over the fire. I pictured like a, a boiling pot of water and then a can over the water not in it, but it would be equally stupid because you could just put the can over the fire and skip the water. My mental image was not much better. In fact, it was arguably worse. Drama. Yeah, um, after you attempt to parry, there's a little period where you can't parry. It's not super long. A parry window is about 6 to 10 frames, depending on how long you hold the direction and what you're parrying. Um, 
and if after you've gone for a parry, after you've had your parry frames, if you didn't parry anything, you can't parry in that direction until like another 10 frames pass. The thing about jump st uh, states is even though the parry is kind of short for mid-air parries, usually people go for the parry in the same little stretch of the jump because like that's the stretch where they're next to you, you know what I mean? It's like you don't actually need to do an air parry until the opponent's close enough that their fucking close spears or whatever could hit you. Talking about close medium kick? There's no forward medium kick in this game. Oh, far. I always read F is forward. It does look weak, doesn't it? It doesn't look like it would hurt very much. Cool. Yeah, Q's does feel kind of similar, but slightly more powerful. If Ryu gets like a good knockdown, he's just gonna win. If he gets like any like two hit sequence into fucking light tatsu. Now the screen position isn't good either. Now I like this for Remy most of the time. Uh, I don't like this setup. Oh, you got it. <laughs> ah, towards fierce. Yeah, options like parries are super simple. It's just whatever you were going to do with a parry right before it. There's, like, nothing to explain. The thing to remember when people are doing jump and parry is that they're they open themselves up to a bunch of other stuff. A really obvious one is to make them land on a low, because in order to do jump and parry, you have to do an empty jump, and they're, you're not you're not tapping down, you're tapping forward. Now you can options like parry mid air and then land in instantly down back, but that makes you very vulnerable to like a defensive throw. Generally, if people are going for a jump and parry on you, you're probably people don't usually do that that much. I find if people are doing that on you, they, you're probably doing stuff like anti air DP or something like that, right? Or like anti air crouch fears, I don't know. Depends on what character you play. But like there are certain things that are really weak to jump in parry. And people don't really like to jump in parry. People usually just do jump in normals until you show anti airs. And certain anti airs just get fucked up by jump in parry. Yeah, don't do that in this game. What character do you play? I'll give you the good anti air. Not every character has a good anti-air for what it's worth. <laughs> 12 would probably be just back medium kick or EX needle. Something like that. Low strong. 12's got a few. Rear can. Anti-air OS parry. So as they jump in, you tap forward. Right before they, right as they get near you. And then a slightly delayed from that close fierce. So tap forward, close fierce. Very common for Ryu and Ken. Crouch fierce also works, but close fierce is kind of faster and less risky. It's wider. Yes, 12 would be a good character in other games. Show me a KKZ. Oh, it's... Show me a KKZ. Chip him out. KKZ. Do it. He's still got too much health, I think. He's not dead to chip yet. Oh, it's snore. I made a huge guide for both Ryu and Ken. It's on sure you can tube. Or rather, they are on sure you can tube. Yeah, don't anti air DP in this game. Almost no one does that. Or, like, if you're going to do it, you need to pick your timing really randomly. An anti air parry, or a mid air parry, only lasts four frames. So you can do, like, um, a really early DP to catch people before they'd be parrying, or a really late DP. But you probably, just the risk reward is really bad for DPs as anti airs. It should be like an anti air that you have, but not every time, just sometimes. That's true, I did make an anti air guide. 
I would say of all the things that shadows can do that makes me hate jumping in on them, OS parry into close fierce is the one I hate the most. It's very simple and very effective. And what you often do is you just do the OS parry and you throw. And then if you see the parry, you close fierce instead. So it's like OS parry delayed back throw. But if you get the parry, it's like, oh, here's my parry, here's close fierce. Generally speaking, if the question is why am I getting parried, the answer is I'm being obvious. That's true in most cases. So if you're doing if you're being obvious for anti air, it usually means you're doing the same anti air every time. I don't have a charge petition tutorial because I'm fucking shit at charge petitioning. Don't attack is a surprisingly effective answer to not getting parried. It like works better than you would think. This guy's name is fucking small forest. Like show more or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it together. Actually, this is probably a, a Japanese last name, isn't it? I didn't think about it. How do you pronounce show? What's that by itself? It's like Chisai, but like, what's, does it does have another Kun reading. This is probably a really basic Japanese name, but I don't know what it is. Gotta wait for them to say it. Alex's dash is not terribly fast. It's fast enough. Every character in Street Fighter 3 has a dash that's fast enough to work. You can definitely just do dash in stuff and have it work. Dash and throw and whatnot. Ko, yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Is Komori a name though? Says the feel of a name. Mori's really common in names. Antier Super is really good in this matchup, but that was a really bad one. <laughs> Antier Super for Akuma is a huge weapon here. Ah. Komori is a real last name. Maybe that's it. Maybe we're looking at a Komori right here. Maybe this is Mr. Komori. Ah. Put your evidence in the tier and the opponent parries, would I recover in time? You would recover. Generally, it depends on the character. Um, yeah, it depends on what they did after the parry too, but most air heavies would be too slow. Also, um, moves that cancel, you can cancel them, even if they get parried. And so if your character has chaining jabs, you can just chain another jab, which Shotos do. So if your anti-air jab gets parried, you can just jab again, and you can just keep jabbing. Jab, jab, and jab, and jab. And the opponent has to, well, eventually just get hit. If they have an air parry that keeps them midair. Which most of them do, I think, or all of them do. That being said, a jab does basically no damage. And also, jabs are really shitty anti airs in and of themselves. So the easiest way to use an anti air jab is to already nullify the opponent's air normal, i.e., with a parry. 
But that's like a common ATR, the absolute highest level play. It's pretty uncommon until the highest level. But at the highest level, every now and then you'll see like anti air parry into close jab. The main thing is that it's just it's so unrewarding. Dash under what super? Dash under after super? Oh, yes. You're talking about like if she does SA2 and then she juggles you, she can dash under afterward, yeah. It's kind of specific because you can't dash under every character in the corner. That's a cool little pickup there. I think the Rose was too meaty there. Oro has anti air close jabs, but I almost never do them. I'd rather parry into my stand strong. That was still a bit punish. Nice. That was a cross under. There you go. We saw one. This is Totsuka Sensei. He's a super good Dudley. One of the best. <laughs> Komori is the last name. Cool. We figured it out. We solved it. Is Totsuka a last name? Probably, right? The toe is door. I don't recognize the Tsuka. Sensei is Sensei. Um, the jab... J people usually overstate just how um, much uh, meter a parry builds. See Dudley Super, it's like a fucking 30th of that. Maybe more than a 30th, but it's not a lot. Actually, yeah, it probably is something like a 30th. Um, but I've rarely seen that be parried more than like three times. And even if it's they're parrying it over and over, you can just stop and let them land and then throw them at any point. But almost always that doesn't happen. People rarely go for it at all, and when they do go for it, usually the third or fourth parry, they are, the third or fourth jab will just hit them out, even if they parry twice. And all the time I've ever played and watched this game, only a few times I've ever seen that whole interaction happen. At all. Yeah, good amount of Alex. Alex sees a decent amount of play. They didn't know whether they were making good or bad Alex, to be honest. I feel like the surname being first makes a little bit more sense. Because it's like, this is my family and here's the particular one. You get the general, then the specific. I'm not just any Tanaka. I'm Tanaka Taro. Which Tanaka are you? Tanaka Taro. I don't know if I'd really call Alex super risky. He's kind of risky. It's more like um, nothing leads to much. The fucking EX fireball by Chun-Li. Oh, look at it. It's useless. Don't even do it. I'm sure she was thinking about EX Fireball Super, but she didn't actually do it. It's kind of risky, because if Alex jumps right then, he'll jump over your Fireball and your Super. Like, if Alex, if you block Alex's, um, if you jump out of Alex's command grab, it can be kind of hard to punish him. Well, I, for me at least, because Boris jump is pretty high. Um, if you get hit by Alex's sweep, it's or if you block Alex's sweep, it's hard to get much more than the poke. Yeah, Chun-Li CX fireball and hits once. Um, what else? I guess the 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 stand fierce is pretty weak to parries, and I guess the sweep technically is too. But I don't like low parry versus Alex meaty. 
It's just not worth it. Why would you ever let Perry? If he's going to meet you with something almost always, it's going to be like close medium kick or stand fierce or something like that. And even if it is low short, it's like whatever. If my play is parry, I'm parrying high versus Alex, if I'm being honest. No reason to parry low. Almost no reason. Oh shit, it's 5 a.m. Where did my day go? That could be a big punish. It wasn't. Top tier. Who I think, huh? This has been well established, my guy. My opinion doesn't mean shit. Yes, Chun Li is deadly in this game. What happened? He tried to parry? Not having an ATR is not a deal breaker in this game because everyone has an ATR called Perry. There are a lot of characters in this game who are good but don't have great ATRs. Chun Li would be the most obvious one. It's not like her ATRs are even like horrible, it's just that she plays a lot of the mechanical ATRs. She can meet you mid decently too. Almost always there's Chun and Yan is top two, and then a tiny power gap, and then Makoto and Ken. And then another tiny power gap, and then people start to debate. Then it starts getting really complicated. Dudley is a common fifth best character. Akuma is a common fifth best character. Um, some people say Yang. Some people say Ryu. Some people say Yurian. All high tiers. Rana Sacha does more than back fierce there, but it's a little bit harder. Oh no, there's another consideration. Where it was just damage and execution. <laughs> and then sometimes people lump in Ibuki or Oro. And even zanier people sometimes lump in Hugo and Q. It's hard to say with a straight face that Hugo and Q are good characters. But they've had a decent amount of success. Um, in good players' hands. Nice. Parry and punish. Isn't it kind of a scary thought that a Chun Li player could be good at parries? Isn't that stressful? Chun Li doesn't ever need to parry for any reason. The fact that she can is just icing on the cake. There are a lot of ways to make a mirror work. An Aegis Reflector, I mean. Oh, nice. That was standing connect and it still comboed. That's how good it was. Very good, meaty. I would have not gotten that confirm. I would have had to YOLO super. Even if I got that timing. I was just not reacted, I mean. Mr. 12! In the most grimy matchup in the game. Nice walk under. That was perfect. Oh, she got him! Oh, nice. Lightning Lex is a good reply to that, actually. Stoll's playing really well. It's going to be tied up if he lands, if he eats a low forward at any point, though. Oh, that was it. Actually, did not see it in time. That could have been super for the kill. That was confirmed. Hard to do, though. Where are the supers by this Chun-Li? She's dead, right? No, not quite. Nice, air axe. I heard it. This Chun Li 12 has to win the first round, I feel. Once Chun Li has meteor, things get so stressful. It's 
It's cool to see him competing in neutral, though. Twelve honestly is really fun to play. Look at that bait. He can get the punish in time. Excellent fake out. This in a dash uh, whiff normal into um. Oh, <laughs> I got her to burn some meter, I guess. This in a dash whiff um, normal into throw is so strong. It adds the throw mix up to his air normals. Twelve can still win with a super, but he basically needs a super. Wow, he's alive. When I get stepped on, I thought it was over. Oh no. This is how it ends. No, he's getting mixed in the corner. She's almost got two bars. Left forward is so powerful at this point. Nice, the fake out again. Instant air dive kick doesn't give enough time to do a he air heavy, so it makes you just land next to the opponent. Wow! He'd already committed to that low short and it hit her. He actually could have super cancelled it. I don't know if he thought that would happen though. Can you blame him? That was the super confirm. That was a super confirm! Those both would have been really nice supers. Oh, this is looking a bit dire. Aww, oh, step kick. Yeah, Chun Li's super actually has no invincibility at all, I found out. It's just that she moves during the super freeze, and if she moves to something, it never hits. Once the super freeze ends, she can get hit by fireballs if the fireball's inside her. Which usually isn't, because of how far she moves. Wake up, Rida. I meant those confirmed supers. The ones from the low short and the light X. Chun Li? I'm surprised there's as much balance between supers as there is in this game, considering the general balance. It's hard to make three supers that are all as good as each other. I think they did a really good job making three supers that all do different things with most of the cast. There's only a few characters where two of the supers are basically fucking carbon copies. The taunt. The Ugly Super 1 and Super 3 is a pretty obvious example. Functionally, they're basically identical. One is slightly stronger, one is slightly cheaper at the end. She can bounce on your head forever if she wants to there. Ryu and Elena are usually regarded as the characters with the best super variants. You can really go for any super on both of them. Ryu in particular is cool because uh, all of his supers have a different feel, whereas Elena Super 1 and Super 2 are pretty similar, functionally. Spinning beats. Not much. It's definitely worse than Super 2. It stores more meter, which is kind of cool, and Elena has good EX for what it's worth. Um, and see, spinning beats a better anti-air, but SA2 does more damage and also stores a lot of meter. So usually if people are, would pick spinning beat, they prefer Brave Dance. So usually with Elena, you see SA2 or SA3, but generally speaking, SA1 is just identical to SA2. And it's just that the tiny ways that they're different, people just prefer SA2. It's like um, SA1 is like a, let's call it a 7, and SA2 is like a 7.2. But considering they have basically the same setups, i.e. a parry, late cancel low strong, shit like that, 
you'd rather just take the one that's a 7.2. You know what I mean? Oh, what's he at? I didn't even look. Seven. That's quite a lot. Oh, he had a combo there. What was it? Shudam? EX Lariat. <laughs> How is Remy better? Um, this screen control is actually really difficult for some characters to deal with. It can be really hard to approach Remy. Sean has like almost no screen control. The blue numbers are... I, th I don't know the actual meaning for these ones. Usually they're the order of the team, or they represent the order of the team at least. Remy has a fairly functional super confirm that he can also just do after a parry. And it's decently rewarding. That's got to count for something, right? Actually, Sean can do that too. Softest hands. It's probably Remy. Or maybe a. No, I don't think Elena. She like stands on her hands for a lot of her moves. They've got to be calloused. Necro. It's no. It's twelve. It's twelve. It's twelve. It's twelve. Hundred percent. Imagine you punch twelve in the face, and your hand just sinks into him, and he just looks at you, and he's like zero one zero zero one zero one. He probably has the hardest hands. It's like the worst answer. We've never seen Dudley's hands. They've always been in boxing gloves. Nice. This is uh, this is an impossible comeback. He could eat everything. He could just let himself eat two supers and he'd win. It was a statement to keep playing. That matchup can go either way. I would say it's generally in Remy's favor, and maybe Remy's only winning matchup. But really, like the it's. It really depends on whether Hugo can get anything going. You know what I mean? Like, that matchup looks hopeless. But then if Hugo starts getting any kind of momentum, Irby just finds, like, a couple, like, lucky parries. Um, he can just, like, get a massive amount of damage with very few openings. The lore behind mirror matches? If only I could tell you, but there isn't one. It's funny that they originally thought about that. In Street Fighter 1 and 2, uh, Street Fighter 1 and World Warrior, you couldn't mirror match because there's only one of that character. It was, uh, I think, a championship edition that allowed mirror matching, right? But originally it wasn't possible. Originally the only way to have a mirror match was to have Ryu fight Ken. One thing that's kind of cool is uh, Mortal Kombat actually has lore behind mirror ma matches. In tons of mirror matches, um, one of the characters will um, talk indicating that the other character is actually Shang Tsung, which is kind of cool. 
Or like sometimes with certain characters, like if it's two Molinas, they'll act like they're clones, mutual clones. Remember it's characters in Mortal Kombat 11 who have like an old and young version. They'll do that too. They like think about why characters would be having conversations with themselves. <laughs> Elena also has a special intro with herself. There's a couple others. Dudley. The two Dudleys drive two different cars. I think we can now attribute all mirror matches in the series to Eleven. Look at Remy's plan working right now. Look at the health difference. Remy's winning. Never mind. Never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> Anti-air parry into jab. There it was. We saw it. It worked instantly. Is that a combo? Did you get a combo? I don't think it's a combo. And here, parry into close forward. <laughs> Remy has jab short as a target combo. Look at that. Oh, yeah, the twins. Both pairs of twins have unique mirrors, I think. There's a surprising number of um, special intros in this game, but a lot of them are really subtle. There are some of them that everyone mentions, like Ryu and Kanner, Alex and um, Hugo. But then there's some that you probably wouldn't notice. Like um, a lot of the characters who have like a little pre-battle bow, are all, they're t they've got a, a custom intro where they they're timed to bow at the same time. Like Makoto and um, Twins. I think a few different characters in Akuma. Dudley's versus Makoto is really cute. Dudley's intro versus Makoto as he pulls up behind her, and the him pulling up blows her gi. The wind effect on her gi is from his car. Very cool little custom intro. Oh no. Two taunts up already and he's taking almost no damage. Just get the third one, fuck it. Oh, I don't like this. You should have gotten it. You get quite a lot of extra HP on the third one. Makoto has a lot of animation, and it's all to show that her body is perfectly still. It's super sexy. She's a... Um, animation porn. Makoto has great form. It's fucking Blue Nocturne. It's Blue Nocturne. I would tentatively say Q has the worst movement in the game. And Remy has very good screen control, even for Q. Or uh, especially for Q. But also, um, Remy cannot prevent taunts from Q. He just doesn't have anything to threaten Q from far away. And when Q taunts, he gets a bunch of extra defense for the rest of the round. Stacks up to three times. Blue Nocturne is almost always regarded to be the worst super in this game. It is bad. Counter supers are always shit, and that's a particularly bad counter super. It, like, can fall out pretty easily. That was only him, yeah.
<laughs> uh, is that so? That's fascinating. Thank you for that very cool insight. Yeah, Remy can super cancel any um, Light of Virtue. And I guess if you super canceled with SA1 or SA2 against a Q trying to super through your fireball, it wouldn't do anything. Q would just like win or trade. But Blue Nocturne would actually counter on Q SA1, right? Cool. Good information. That's funny because that works on paper. One thing that's annoying though is um, you can't do super motions during freezes. So you would have to, on every Light of Virtue, you'd have to do a super motion. Which especially sucks because um, um, that prevents you from recharging after a new fireball. Cool. That was stand short into, um, come here, grab. Stand short can be parried low or high. So the idea is you want the opponent to parry that so you can cancel it to come here, grab. And that catches people going for parry into something slow. Love this matchup, Slugfest. Big slow guys, just throwing around huge ass hitboxes. He might have been too far for our super confirm there. I think max range dash punch doesn't come on Tessie too. I parried all of it. It's not a super duper hard parry. It's not free. It's like all pretty continuous. It's like eight really quick parries. I don't think there's a break. Like Oro spirit bomb shit. I've done that spirit. I've done that full parry, but never in a match. It's not a crazy hard parry, but I would hate to do it in a match. I would hate for it to matter. Yeah, the way that it hits, it's just tap forward until you stop parrying. And very rapidly. You don't have to count. That was, um... Oh, another midair hit. On, um, midair connect. That super is a hard knockdown. I mean, it's always a hard knockdown. So he couldn't have quick stood to get a punish. Like the farther it traveled, wrestling shoes. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, you mean like like the longer you held back, like fucking Bishamon? For those who don't know, Bishamon had a charge special that the longer you charge, the more range it had. Did you know that Daigo started as a Bishamon player? Is that weird? Or is that weird? Is that like a crazy thought for anyone else? <laughs> oh, nice. Poked through the mirror a couple times. His Bishamon like boxer. In a very, very, in a few very random ways. Kind of. Daigo's first fighting game was like Darkstalkers or Night Warriors or something. I mean, it was probably SF2 casually or something like that. Yeah, he like traded though. It was like low short, I think, based on the hit. I play um, All Bath. And Vsav, now you know. Also QB, a little bit. I just like characters who can throw fucking huge orbs that are obnoxious. It's really, that's how I pick my characters. Who throws the orb in this game? Nice parry. 
Super would have been good there. Nice. Later. Looking nice so far. Good jump. Anacharis has so many moves where it's like, what does this even do? But I think the answer is actually nothing for a lot of them. <laughs> A lot of them have basically impossible inputs. Might be a slight exaggeration. His zoning is cool. I know he's got a unique mechanic where he can like backdash when he's in the corner and like pop out on the other side of the screen, so he's impossible to corner. That's super novel. And he's got that weird, unique jump. Where, like, only half of him jumps. We do not know whether G is Q. We will probably never find out. I like this theory. Oh, no, the command grab got snatched. Oh, that's... Mm, that's a bad drop. He didn't get the damage of VX dash punch, and he didn't get either of the taunts, because I think you can taunt twice there. Overhead dash punch to EX dash punch is used... You don't get a juggle after the EX dash punch, because your juggle potential is used up, so it's used entirely for the Oki that you get from the wall bounce. Eleven is not the fifth character. When they revealed the... Um, after they revealed Eleven, um, they showed off the different packs you could buy, and how much money you could spend. And eleven and the five new characters were listed separately, and the question the the fifth character was still listed as being a question mark. I'm really hoping that eleven swaps characters every single match online. I'd really like if he swapped characters every round, but I understand why they wouldn't do that. Fifth character's not going to be Oro because, like, the third character's going to be Oro. Oro's already confirmed. Based on survival mode, the game can actually load different characters really quickly. But also, survival mode does it in a particular order. idea I find it very likely the fifth character is going to be someone entirely new no Dude, they should actually add Big Ryu as a character. I'm down for this. It's just Ryu, but he's like 9 feet tall, and he's like, I've been studying to be a grappler. And he's got Hadoukens and DPs and fucking command grab. It's Ryu with Zangief's body type.
Wow, I want Baby Akuma now. Love to see it. Ryu has so many ways to parry now. I count four. Oh, this one's a stream. Fuck the stream, I don't want the stream. Alright, so this is the last one for tonight, I think. You got 17 minutes more with me before I leave. Ryu's V-Skill 1 is free. That's a really big weapon. It's more that it's giving it to everyone else, though. But Ryu would still probably not pay for it if he can afford not to pay for it. <sighs> like, everyone can now V-Shift a Mika Dropkick, but Ryu can counter a uh, Mika Dropkick, and that would be preferred. One, because it's free, and two, because you get V-Meter for it. And three, because, I don't know, you get a better punish. I wouldn't personally call Ryu the worst character or even that bad in SF5. When I look at Ryu's matchups, it's like okay. Honestly, he probably has five hives versus almost the whole cast. I can't think of that many matchups that are bad. Maybe just Sim and Minot. Maybe like uh, Akuma or something. People like to overstate Ryu's badness, but really he's just uninteresting. That being said, I think he's probably bottom half. Nash, I don't know. The tiers are pretty tight. It really depends more on matchups. Alex is a decent contender, but I still wouldn't say it confidently. Oh. It's fucking SA1. He made it look pretty good right there. I would hate a better Alex in SF5. I already hate Alex in SF5. Yeah, you get more meteor in Ken SA3, I'm pretty sure, than Ken SA1. Pretty sure. Almost always three bars are more than two bars. Even if it's a short three bar and a long two bar. That being said, Ken's SA1 meter, I haven't seen it in a while. It's surprisingly long. Which is good and bad, of course. I believe Ken's SA1 is actually as fast as super. The other two are both one frame slower. It's not that bad. I mean, you can still confirm it from, like, target combo. That's something. He's still picking it. He's going in. I say one can. That's kind of cool. People don't like Chun Li far stand fierce. Can you blame them? I don't like it either. Why can't you just hit me from all the way across the screen? Nice, that's a really fast super. Yeah, I can't imagine picking it in this matchup for any particular reason. I think it's the memes. She does have long legs, but why the fuck does that mean she has a good stand fierce? That makes good sense if she's doing a good stand runhouse. That's true. The legs do contribute a little bit. Oh, where's the super? I'd like to see it there. This is Street Fighter 3 Third Strike East vs. West 2020-1029.
I can give you a link if you really want it. East versus West is a weekly, yeah. That looked like the wrong frame, but there's two frames where it works for SA, SA2. And I'm not super familiar with all the frames anyway. This looks hard for Ken at this point. Ken low short, low short confirms all three of his supers. Oh my god. Oh my god, this Ken player. Kashi is really good. <gasps> Where's the super? Okay, it's over. That was a really good comeback. <laughs> EX flash kick probably would have worked there. Yeah, Ken's basic DP combos are all pretty damaging. That's really the key with Ken. It's like his big weapon. Nice. Ken's meterless damage is just weirdly high. Especially if he gets double DPs. Please tell me that's not true, that's terrifying. Is that with target combo? Or like fucking close strong or whatever works on the character you're fighting. Close strong double DP. That shit really does do like half your health. And against most of the cast that's free in the corner. Or rather it doesn't require the Kara. Calling it free is a bit strong. Um, no. And also the fucking first Ken in that sentence. Only Super 3 combos from overhead. You can link any of his supers after a universal overhead, but the pushback is too high um, for anything but SA3 on the back medium kick overhead. You might be able to do towards hard kick uh, into SA1. I don't think I've ever labbed that. I wouldn't be surprised if it worked, because that one leaves you pretty close. But towards hard kick is kind of a shitty overhead. Oh, that is a bad field, Glar. Nice, good combo. Kashi's killing it. This is Kashi unlocked right here. He's like, I don't need to fucking pick other shit. I gotta say one can. This is a good video. This is the weird shit that's going on. Like, how often do you see SA1 Ken? This is like fucking, this is worth archiving. No, universal overheads are actually non-standard. Different characters will have a different amount of plus frames after their overhead. That was a failed car. That's what they look like. They look like with low roundhouse. Kind of enlightening to see that he does it with roundhouse. You can do it with roundhouse or forward. I think that roundhouse has a longer total whiff animation, doesn't it? So theoretically, you should use forward. I don't even know if that's true. To the best of my knowledge, both of them work. Both of them have the same forward movement, so it doesn't matter which one you do. Well, 
Wow. Double the button. That's... I never thought about that. Hit both medium kick and hard kick, and then try to car the light punch after either one. It's a weird thought. I like can't think of how that would work with the Kara. I can see how pianoing would be good for the normal. <laughs> Luis, I wake up hard DP super. It's kind of novel. Ken's hard DP is actually invincible. He could have played that. I would have. Nice. There are a lot of subtle little tricks to make execution better in this game. I don't want this video to ever end, but there's only seven minutes left. I say one can. I was a bit surprised, but it got a midair connect, like a high midair connect. Maybe not high, but you know. Higher than natural. Damn, that's a fucking, that's a Pepe right there. That's a feel. Oh, where's the super? That was gonna almost kill. No, we never get any snow here. I'm too close to the ocean. Snow is a non-thing. Ah, uh, that was kill. Can't think that's a super actually was gonna kill. This is just a dropped kill combo. This is looking real hard for Ken to win though. Yep, that is. Oh, he's still on. Thank God. Now we've got SA2 Kashi. This is the fucking Kashi Kumite. Blessed. <laughs> nice. Medium DP looks the same as light DP. Light DP is a much more common anti here. That was it! He dropped it! He dropped baby confirms. Nice, this combos, I think. Lost a little bit of damage, but not a lot. That was a punish, pretty sure. Hard DP on wake up, got the reversal. He's like, fuck your meaty. Here's my fist. That's, I've never thought about that. Are they playing on event mode? I never hear coins get put in. Yeah, that's true. Maybe he just fucked it up. Maybe he forgot. <laughs> Shinryu can his kick. Oh yeah, you can just look at the full VOD. I forgot that was a thing. Yeah, if you put it to free play, um, you don't have to put in coins. There's also event mode, which I think they don't play on. Event mode is where both characters, both players swap characters after the match. Look at that damage. Kuma fucking died. Dude, this Kashi fucking Kumite is good as shit. He's playing like a killer.
Cool. I never would have had the balls to do that. The trade. Tiru. Tira. Excuse me. I was looking so hard on the T. I didn't look at the rest of it. Because that T is so weird. Light DP? Holy shit. He used Light DP as a poke. I love when people do that. That's like surprisingly great in this game. <gasps> that pickup! That was good as shit. Nice. <laughs> Instead of low short, low short, he did low short, low jab. It doesn't really matter that much. That's how the Makoto one with Tominaga worked. I think you weren't here for it. But Tomi did one of these where he played all of the Makoto Supers. Versus everyone. It's a fun little thing. Have a kumite where you have to run through your Supers. This isn't my first time seeing this format, but it's my first time in a long time seeing this format. There's really famous footage of Tokido playing Sean, and it was in a tournament where you got to choose three characters, and once that character died, you couldn't pick them anymore. Also, in that tournament, top tier characters were banned, and Tokido is a um, Chun-Li main. Who knows? It was just for fun, probably. That one's gone into my favorite list, though, because of how fucking fun it was. I'm going to bed. DPs are super fast in every Street Fighter. Yeah, I can't think of a Street Fighter game with slow DPs. They're almost always like three frames.